It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Renee Ritchie's here. Andy Anako's here. We're going to, of course, talk about Apple's big announcements last week at WWDC. What could go wrong? Are we in a post-PC world? Why do we need Apple Silicon? And why should we call it Apple Silicon? Plus a look at the new AR Kit 4. It's mind-blowing. It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. MacBreak Weekly comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. Stay in control when it comes to your company's access points and authentication. LastPass makes enterprise-level security simple for your remote workforce. Check out lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 720, recorded Tuesday, June 30th, 2020. Microsoft's riding mower. This episode of Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Casper. Casper is a sleep brand that makes expertly designed products to help you get your best rest one night at a time. Get $100 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash macbreak and using the promo code macbreak at checkout. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Apple. And it's going to be a really slow couple of months. <laughs> Fortunately, <laughs> there's still a lot to talk about. Renee Rich is here from iMore. Great to have you back. Missed you. You say that, Leo, but I haven't slept in like. Yeah, seven you're or eight exhausted, days. aren't you? I bet you are. I bet you are it's really. It's the best kind, though. It's Christmas in, in June, and it just is so much. It's like all the presents are open, and I get to put the Lego together now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Andy Anako also here. Good to see you, Andy. Hello. Uh, we thought we had Alex. He bailed at the last minute. That's okay, because you two get to make it Comic Book Central. <laughs> are, are we allowed to guess like, whether Alex is at an undisclosed location, maybe right where Johnny Saruji was last yeah, week? It's a little are suspicious we allowed to that he's not here now, <laughs> but okay. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, which one of you wasn't here last week? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I, here, I, I see. To Ray, I was. Oh, I, I was here. Yeah. Oh, it must have been Alex wasn't yeah. here. So the, okay, good. All right, because yeah. I know Lori was, and we yes. got Lori's take on all of this on uh, Sunday. She was on Twitter, which was great. Yeah, that was a great show. Yeah. yeah. Well, you liked it because it was all Apple. I heard from a few people. <laughs> I would have liked it regardless because I like those people. Yeah. And <laughs> I did hear from Dan Patterson who said, thank God I didn't want to hear any COVID news and I didn't hear any COVID news. It was really all about the candy store yep. uh, <laughs> or the fruit company, depending on your if point of view. If it was Google I.O. week, it would have been the same thing with Android. Oh, yeah. I mean, just it happens a couple times yeah, a year. Yeah. That's exactly what Jason Snell said. Twice a year, it's all Apple all the time. And, yeah. and there's actually, you know, I didn't want to kind of steal the thunder from this show either, but golly, there's a lot to talk about. I decided yeah. today... To play devil's advocate. Uh -oh. Because I can't, I keep trying. I tried last week with you guys. I tried Sunday uh, to say, okay, but what's the negative on this transition to Apple Silicon? And Oh, can I play the devil then if you're doing the advocate? I'll be the advocate. You'll be the <laughs> okay. devil. On my okay. left shoulder, the devil. No, that's Andy. On the right shoulder. So uh, I have negatives for you. As excited as I am about Apple Silicon, I do wonder... If we're haven't we been in a post PC era for a while now, <laughs> and is it really uh, does it really matter? I think ultimately, I wonder does it really matter what chip you're on, what even what operating system you're on, because I see a world increasingly that operates off uh, data and programs in the cloud on clients that uh, can range from a Game Boy. <laughs> to a desktop <laughs> thin client. And, uh, you know, for instance, uh, and I've been saying this about Windows for a long time, the next time a business buys a computer, they probably shouldn't buy a Windows 10 computer. They should just buy something that can connect to Windows 10 in the cloud and run their apps up there. And I, it, 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 there's huge benefits to that. Maintenance, operations, you know, security, on and on and on. The only negative, the only downside is, uh, local data. If you're living in the cloud and the and the cloud goes away, then you you kind of have some problems. You just explained why Satya Nadella is CEO of Microsoft now and not Steve Ballmer anymore. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> and, and 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 you know, we talked a lot on Wednesday on Windows Weekly about uh, Apple's announcement because, and 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 completely coincidentally, Microsoft's closed all of its stores forever. Yeah, <laughs> last and week. Mixer and Mixer. 
And I think it's a Microsoft that is increasingly focused on exactly the scenario I just talked about. They, Windows is nice. Yeah. Office is nice. It's Scott McNeely. You know, it's always been, it's it's always coming, but never quite arriving. You know, and Scott McNeely would talk about the thin cloud and Larry Ellison would talk about the thin cloud and the early founders of Google. And we're slowly, we're slowly getting to the point where the actual cloud works enough to make it a non-horrible experience locally. Yeah. And also with Microsoft, you see them. It was it was there was there was that eight year period in which they decided they they didn't know what they wanted to be, or they didn't want they didn't want to admit that they actually like wearing ties. You know, you, you know that you know that it, it happens to like so many people, like so many men and women, where it's like, wow, well, I'm gonna buy this rock and roll T-shirt, like which I don't wear anymore because I feel like I don't, I just don't want to wear them anymore. So you saw Microsoft feel as though, oh, I, I'm, def I'm, de I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna develop a smartwatch, and I'm gonna develop like a consumer, uh, I'm gonna have an, uh, I'm gonna have a, a special version of Windows that works on an iPad sort of thing. And it took them a while to realize that there are reasons why they have the market share. That they have and it's because they don't know how to be apple they know but they know they really know how to be microsoft yeah so the microsoft store was always a very very odd sort of choice for them to make uh because the, it was it was such a brilliant choice for apple because they are they are a place where if you're in a mall you will buy the sort of stuff that people in malls like to buy in addition to being a service center but for microsoft it was like we really want one of those two. Please, can we have a riding yeah. mower? I know that we don't. I know that the neighbor has a big lawn and we have a small one, but I really want a riding mower. <laughs> it's really true. We have it's Microsoft's darts. riding mower. Mowers. <laughs> That's really yes. true. <laughs> the thing where I think it's differentiated, though, is that um, if you are somebody, and I totally believe you, I have the same vision of a mobile endpoint. We're all going to have little marbles or mother boxes in our pockets that authenticate us. <laughs> You know, through biometrics, connect to the cloud and recreate our computing environment in AR or opportunistically with whatever hunk of glass we happen to be near with any sort of input method that's available. But I think there is going to be at least, you know, short term, decade long divide where some people don't care at all where all of the operations on that data are completed. You know, they're just as happy for Google or Microsoft to do it on the cloud as they are for it to happen anywhere. And there'll be some percentage of people that want that, that still want control over that data and want um, the more private data acted on locally and having cutting edge silicon in iPhones and iPads and Apple, whatever, you know, the next generation of products is will be a competitive advantage for them because they'll be able to. Yeah, do so I, I actually was thinking about that last night. I thought you could build, I, I, I kind of had this, <laughs> this notion of it was a sci-fi story almost. Shouldn't everybody, every home, every person have a secure enclave that stores everything they do? And that is somehow online doesn't matter where it's hosted but some you know could be in your closet but it's somehow online and accessible with all of these edge devices that we are eventually going to be using because that's clearly what's happening that you just described it with a watch and glasses yeah. and <laughs> IOT devices we want to be able to access our data everywhere but we want to secure private enclave and it even goes along with this vision that tim bernie's lee and others have expressed Bruce schneier too that maybe we should have control of our data and then sell it or lease it or let allow somebody yeah. to see yeah. it yeah and, well, I, well the only way you do that is in your own secure enclave uh what what is so but that doesn't seem like much of a role for, here's my problem <laughs> apple just announced the newest shiniest thing i've ever seen i love it it's the it's the equivalent of princess amadala's starship you know, with Apple Silicon. Created by Alex Lindsay. Yeah, it's, yes. it's beautiful. <laughs> I want it. But they made this thing in an era when, you know, we don't really need starships anymore because we got teleportation, you know? Mm. Not quite, though. I, well, Adam just told being spread about the galaxy. <laughs> yeah. But, but I think that yeah, I, I think that you, you hit it on the head earlier that um, it used to be that we would think, in, think of computing in terms of mobile and uh, mobile and desktop, or mobile and not mobile, let's say. So meaning that uh, the things that are designed to be uh, carried in your pocket, worn your wrist, or a, a tablet that's so easy to carry around, you'd carry it even if you don't need it, versus a something that runs a desktop operating system, be it a really, really slim notebook or a really, really powerful desktop. Now, however, in, the, in 2020 and 20, uh, going forward, there's the third category, which is uh, I, I don't care. You know, where uh, and those are the people for and that's why I think that Apple put so much uh, 
not only so much development, but so much focus on uh, in the in the their announcements last week on Safari because basically uh, apps that run within a browser are the king of uh, I don't care computing because it does <laughs> it does like the, 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 your basic biscuits and gravy computing where I want I need to get my email I need to do messaging I need to get access to some sort of uh, powerful, but not necessarily a uh, hammer of God's uh, powerful uh, office suite. All that sort of stuff is done really, really, really well by anything that can run in a very good web browser. This is why uh, this is why uh, so many old computers have a great lease on life because it used to be you'd say, oh, well, I'll, I'll install Linux on it, which doesn't put quite so many demands on it. Now you might put Linux on it just to say all it has to do is run, <laughs> run Firefox or run a, a Chromium based browser and it's suddenly a, a perfectly usable laptop again. So I think that that's something that Apple is very, very wise to keep focused on because as soon as they seed that the the I don't care computing category to, well, they're just going to use Chrome and that's about it. Uh, that's when they lose the attention of, uh, of that's when they lose the attention of their users. That's when they lose the ability to sort of project Apple specific enhancements to their users as well. Well, and of course, uh, Apple Silicon will have amazing battery life and has yeah. a great low power curve as all, yeah. all ARM architectures do. Um, so maybe that is, you know, maybe I just, I feel like Apple's, Apple's designing a Ferrari and we're all getting bicycles. It's, uh, it's just not good. Like it's, it's like with Stadia or you, you look at all these technologies and it's like, yes, for like, it's like 80% of the time it's 80% good enough. And I think it's going to take five years to maybe iron all that out. And in the meantime, Apple will have their own Silicon. They'll be designing exactly for what they want. And they're going to make sure like when you look at, uh, I forget who posted, it, it might've been DHH, but they were posting the benchmarks for, uh, browsers and thanks to the, the stuff that Apple builds into the chips to do JavaScript acceleration, it just yeah. radically outperforms what so, you're getting in other browsers. So you'll want an Apple and that's thin, a hybrid best of both You'll want worlds. an Apple yeah. thin client. <laughs> yes, that's it. I want my thin client to be Apple Silicon. <laughs> well, and there is a market there. And I guess, you know, it's kind of the same market. Uh, it's just a little bit of a different form factor as the laptop market. So, yeah. And in a way, really, your phone and your iPad are thin clients in a lot of the uses. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I just I uh, you know I I I wanted to bring up the one negative. I really saw this move to Apple Silicon as transformational for technology in the computer industry. Actually, not for technology, for the computer industry. <laughs> and then it hit me: maybe there is no computer industry. You really. want battery life on your yeah. like on your thin client? It's like there's all sorts of really compelling features that once you control the silicon, you can like they have their own H.265 encode decode, and that means that when you watch Netflix or Apple TV, it just lasts longer and is better processed than it is, and, and all of those things. I still want a computer with Apple Silicon. I want <laughs> so I think a two terabyte hard though, drive. Is that, I want like, a hundred teraflops. We still don't have answers. <laughs> we don't. We don't know. Like, can you install Linux on this? Like we, we've heard that you can install un, like no longer signed versions of Mac OS. And that means like if you put it in reduced security mode, you can go wait in minute, and do that. Wait a minute. Does... Slow the unpack that one. Cause that's interesting. <laughs> okay. So we saw, of course we saw Linux running in emulation, in emulation but you're yeah. saying that the new Apple hardware will not require a signed operating system. So there's two modes. What uh, there's two when you get it, you'll be able to choose between two modes. The first mode, the default mode, the mode I'm going to call like for mainstream users, runs exactly like an iPhone and an iPad, and it can run iPhone and iPad apps, and it's just total security. It's 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 exactly like the iPhone security model. You can though go in and change that setting to reduce security, and that disables system integrity protection and a bunch of other stuff. I don't think it's officially so called hobbyist it's, mode, it's but it's analogous to what Microsoft does with Secure Boot on Windows and what Google does with Secure Boot on a Chromebook, right? Yeah, it's similar so, to that. The only difference with the, the iPhone on, and on, the Mac on, is that on you PCs, can boot from external. On PCs and, and Chromebooks, you can turn it off. It's a little tricky on yeah. a Chromebook, but on PCs, you can turn it off in BIOS on many PCs. Yeah. You could never do that on Apple, right? You couldn't install your own ar arbitrary operating system on Apple hardware. Or you could, could you? and then it got complicated with the T2, and then you had to boot in to get rid of SIP, and it was a whole complicated right. thing. But it was a hobbyist thing. Um, and now you'll be able to do the same thing. It looks even more so easily. So I'll be able, but, theoretically, to do a dual-boot uh, Mac Linux machine. 
Well, so we don't know. They did say that you'll be able to run uh, like uh, versions of macOS that Apple's no longer signed, but they haven't oh. mentioned anything about any other operating. Oh, system. that's really that's well, the exact they, opposite direction they're going with the iPhone, isn't it? But but didn't they didn't they specifically mention uh, virtualization of Linux installs? They showed that yes, yeah. virtualization, but, but not that's in like virtualization. native virtualization. Yeah, that's the okay. hypervisor. And maybe it, maybe it works. I just don't know. It's just what we haven't heard anything yet. So like those yeah, are the things that they would bring right that up are, though. Are stressing on. Well, it's interesting. it was in this talk. There's a whole session on Apple Silicon and how the secure boot works and the two different security modes. And they also have this really cool new restore process where uh, you, no like you no longer have to hold down those keys or try to remember what those keys are. Now, if you hold down the power key, all, touch ID key, it'll give you a, a menu. Oh, hallelujah. And you can choose which boot option. <laughs> yeah. But also it has a conceit. I hit it. And this is something I wor I'm wondering about for the portless, I inevitably portless iPhone too, uh, or portless whoever makes a phone. It's got a hidden um, recovery partition. So even if you annihilate the drive, ah. you annihilate the normal recovery partition, ah. it's got a completely sealed, secure, little tiny instance that it can use to recover the entire machine if it needs to. That's cool. Which I thought was super yeah. clever. So you've watched all, have you now watched all the sessions? Most of them. I'm doing them in order of priority. I've made a whole list of prioritization yeah. <laughs> and I'm just going. So I've done all the Apple Silicon ones. I've done a lot of the iOS interface ones. I've done a lot of the iPad OS ones. I'm starting on the watch ones. There's so much to, to unpack. There's, there's so 200 much, sessions. Yeah, there's so much goodness. And I, yeah, do you, and, I asked this uh, last uh, on Twit with Jason Snell and Dan Morin and Lori Gill. Isn't this a better WWDC doing it this way? It's so much more inclusive anybody can participate yeah. yeah i think so it's particularly because I, I think that it also gives apple uh more it, it's it's less of a distraction for apple now because they don't have they don't have to get the entire dog and pony show running for the circus tent up and running for an entire week of their schedule it's more like well this person th this team is completely ready with their content so let's just have them do all of their sessions right now three weeks in advance they're in the can and now they're free to do do uh, what they're actually being paid to do uh, actually making making sure that these features that they just talked about <laughs> actually work by by september uh, and it's it's always been a big thorn in people's side to get these big Big circus tent sort of things running. Uh, the 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 effect on productivity, the effect on on schedules, it's considerable. And the fact that they keep doing them shows you how important it is that they uh, how important it is that they have these regular events. I have to say now that I'm when you're talking about this boot, this really <laughs> yep. is a, a perfect example of why leaving Intel is a good thing. Because yeah. you really were defined somewhat by the re requirements of the x86 yes. uh, chips uh, as to your boot process. Now and to work around it. I mean, they worked. They created a whole. They they made and stuck in and charged us for a whole T2 chip just to provide some level of security around right. the boot process. Yeah. And now they can do literally anything they want, which could be good or bad. I you know. I, yeah. We've had time now to absorb this. Uh, we did Mac Break Weekly pretty much the next day last week. So, <laughs> but as I absorb this, uh, I, I want to reiterate. I feel like this was very good news for people who love Mac. Yeah, I, I uh, I'm my, I think this is part of my job to point out things like, oh, do we really want a desktop operating system that locks you out of a lot of the things that make the desktop experience so valuable? That's my job, and I do sincerely feel those things. However, uh, I'm capable of feeling multiple things at the same time. Well, what are we losing? One of the, one of the, what, but 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 I'm, but I'm sorry, just to complete my point. Uh, but it's also one of the things that one of the advantages of having, depending on your where whose stats you believe, uh, less than 20 percent or less than 10 percent of the market share is that you are completely microsoft has has desktop computing covered anybody who needs traditional desktop computing it's covered they have that option available so you should you should now feel free as a, as a as a manufacturer to say let's go a little bit nuts let's push the let, let's push the envelope a little bit more so that people who are using Macs for a specific reason because they've looked at the ecosystem of Windows and decided that's not for me can get some absolutely unique advantages uh, that to, that come from a, a company that's not only just developing every scrap of code that's on this thing but every scrap hardware that's inside this thing so i yeah. hope that apple goes i wouldn't say a little bit nuts but i would be disappointed if they went if they did this switch to a whole new uh, architecture and they didn't take advantage of all of the freedom that they have now as engineers to develop a computer that's exactly the way that they think a computer should run yeah what are we giving up 
Control Windows. and boot camp. Boot besides <laughs> yeah. boot camp, and maybe not boot camp. We that's. Well, no. So uh, I don't know if you saw, but they, uh, John Gruber had Craig Vegarigi and that, Jaws. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and they they talked specifically about what he said was like hobbyist features, but that boot camp was not surviving the transition in the future for that kind of stuff. It's going to be virtualization. Yeah, and they said it'll be just as good. You won't need it, but of course. People who like to run on bare metal say. So, yeah. So if Windows are like so, and some developers love the Mac because they could run Unix and Linux and yeah. OS te and Mac OS and Windows all on one machine. Uh, so any for a lot of people, Windows is not relevant. Like if you're on Chrome OS or you're on Mac OS, it's not relevant. But for other people, it's an absolute have to have. So they're going to have to. Right. It's the same way like now gamers just have like they have their MacBook and they have their gaming PC. They may just <laughs> yeah. like do other things more on their gaming PC. Yeah, this is we we, we ha, people who are older who grew up through the uh, floppy disk wars. <laughs> remember, remember when they tried to to give us three and a half inch floppies? We said no, yeah. five and a quarter or die. Uh, we I have had to understand that. My goodness. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, but we we have to understand that there are people that are saying that hey if I I can buy an eighty dollar device that fills in the gaps that my my two thousand dollar computer doesn't have and I don't want a, and just as you said Renee I would much rather buy a three hundred dollar to seven hundred dollar game system uh, console game system to do the gaming I don't care that that uh, that this platform is not necessarily good for gaming um, as for what we give up I'm still concerned that Apple's going to lock things down more than I would like uh, I'm still concerned that if I have uh, if my if my favorite CD ripper uh, is a open source project that hasn't been updated since three years but still works perfectly fine on a yeah. machine that that will accept that hey look dude I trust this app and I own this computer so you're gonna run this app even if it means my doom I'm concerned that we're gonna lose some of that power I, I think that's that yes I, I I'm less worried about it today than I was after let's say our uh, 81. Of watching videos, but uh, I'm still something that's in my back, the back of my mind. Well, it's interesting. For instance, this alternate reduced security boot. One yeah. of the things Apple called out was that for those of you who can, who need certain kernel extensions that we're no longer going to yeah. allow, because that's an in, that's a real insecurity. That surprised uh, the hell out of me. Keeping it. Yeah, you could do it in well, a less secure boot, and you can boot your own kernel extensions. It's it's that kind of thing for that now, encourages. They kept saying that, yeah, though. for now. Yeah. But it does encourage me a little <laughs> bit. Ability mode. Yeah, <laughs> and they have to be signed, right? So that's the only other you know, concession. Apple. I understand that Apple is facing a, a world where there's really two threats to users: privacy and security, and they've decided to double down on both. But there's a consequence to doing that, which is yep. freedom. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I understand they're trying to balance those uh, dueling priorities. And, yep. you know, they're probably going to come down on privacy and security because that's what most people want. Well, I like that and, it's the and, default. Like if you're smart enough to go in and turn it off, then you probably understand yes. like, the consequences of turning it off. And that seems to me like a really good user user interface balance. So what 100%. You talk a little bit, Renee, about uh, the changes in Big Sur on iMore. Yeah. Um, a lot of the concern, I'm trying, again, trying to bring up the the uh, concern or the issues Please. people are worried about. Now that I've done cheerleading for about eight hours on this stuff, um, <laughs> there are- If we don't criticize it, Leo, they can't fix it. Okay. <laughs> True. Uh, and and I will say again, the minute they ship the first, what it, it looks like it'll be a, maybe a iMac or a 13-inch MacBook Pro with it, yeah. uh, Apple Silicon, I will be in line to buy it. I, I can't wait. But there are some concerns. Everybody has all along been concerned about the melding of iOS, iPadOS, and macOS. And this seems to have been furthered in some, in odd ways. Like iPadOS is more like macOS and macOS is more like iPadOS. Read those tea leaves for me, Renee. So the thing that uh, that struck me uh, when I was talking to people this week is that Apple and I think a lot of us view these very differently, especially Twitter, because as much as I love Twitter, it is very loud, but very niche. Um, right. And a lot of the concerns that Twitter brings up are things like, oh, the silicon is becoming similar. The operating system components are becoming similar. Things about the interface layers are becoming similar. And when I talk to people at Apple, they don't look at the products 
at all like that. Like those are just little Lego blocks for them, but they're still building different products um, over them. And not the least of which, because both of those products are billion dollar businesses. And until one of them starts to slide, they don't want to lose those billions of dollars that they get from <laughs> both of those revenue streams. But I think moreover, it's like what we saw. And I, I, I hate to go back to Steve's truck analogy because it's, you know, it's, it's labored in so many ways, but with the like trucks are super popular now. And in part, because people started adding car like amenities to them, like they became more comfortable. They started using the same components, so they became easier to manufacture. But we don't look at a truck and say, oh, it's got tires and an axle and a steering wheel and these kinds of seats. Oh, they're merging it with the car, you know, because on one side you have the SUV and the other side you have Optimus Prime. There's a, like a wide range <laughs> of these things. And I think to Apple, that's how they see it. They want badly the efficiencies that come from having all the same components for these things. But to them, they're still building the iPad car and the Mac truck, and they really don't understand why we keep giving them static over it. It's it's more it's more being worried than anything else. And as the more I think about it, the more I realize that a lot of my concern is that I don't see the same sort of delight from developers. Uh, uh, iPhone developers and, uh, and watch developers have a certain amount of delight in coming up with something interesting and coming up with something that's unique. I don't see the same sort of delight universally in the Mac community. I'm sorry, no, I'm, I'm going to walk that back a, a, a half a step. Uh, I'm saying that once we if we encourage people to be iPhone developers that then transition to Macs, if that's what happens, I'm wondering if we can convince iPhone developers to say, no, 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 stop, stop. Don't just use extra screen real estate. There are opportunities here for creating an amazing Mac app that are just as exciting as this wonderful iPhone app that you started off with. And so that's my concern that if Apple, uh, even, in, even without intending to, sends the signal that if you're hip, if you're new, if you're wonderful, if you're cool, if you're want to change the world you're building a mac app you're building an, iP an iphone app and now it's easy for you to actually eh, you can make a mac app too sure if you want to it's kind of won me over <laughs> i mean they made messages right that's an incredible endorsement of yeah. uh catalyst as a technology because that is the most important app for apple like they, they probably like you yeah. can argue safari but just out of, like out of usage numbers that and that's one of the things that keeps people. When people talk about the ecosystem, they mention AirDrop, they mention messages. You know, it's, it's about all of that. And they're at the point now. Like they certainly weren't three years ago. Certainly weren't two years ago. This year, they're putting messages in Catalyst, and that's the sort of thing I look for because it's not words. It's like we're confident enough in our technology that we can finally give you scent with lasers. Yeah, and but wouldn't, but, wouldn't, but wouldn't it be more significant, at least from my point of view? Uh, to create a version of messages for Android rather than a version of messages for for Mac, I think that would be the most that would be an important step for the app and for the entire platform, and also You're and nuts. also for protect, protect people together. Well, yeah, I don't think they have time, Andy. They're so busy making. <laughs> they tablets. have time. They, yeah. I think that's not in their business interests. They like this walled garden. They are making. I have to say, they're making a. I mean. For a gated community, it's really nice. <laughs> well, no, I will also say that there's yeah. two things Apple does really badly: internet services and other platform apps. Is that apps. still true? My message would be both of those. Things. Is that still I mean, there's true? like look at Windows and like you look yeah. at music. The music is fine on Android, but like I don't know if it's anyone would say it's best in class on Android, and iTunes never was. So it's. And like, yeah. what, and Apple's also like they they have a business model based approach. Like what like this has to add to our money and or our uh, ecosystem, and that doesn't either. And I don't think people would pay a subscription price. I mean, I, I mean, if they bundle it with TV or something, I'm, I don't know. I'm with you, Andy, because I use Android, but uh, yeah. Air and message. outside North America, people don't care about iMessage. Yeah, they don't really. Yeah. That's that's actually a bigger problem, right? A lot of what Apple uh, has been doing is to appease to appeal to uh, other international markets that's where they're growing yeah, well, also, WhatsApp also, and it's line and yeah it's hard to be whatsapp also this is this is an iffy time to put lots and lots of money into developing a messaging app with end-to-end -end encryption yeah As you might say <laughs> yeah you might have <laughs> to redo it's wonderful. it and now see now now we have to put in some back doors Damn yeah it. yeah you might yeah. have to do that over there uh so big sur looks more like ipad os uh, couldn't help but notice, Jason Snell observed this in Macworld, 
Those touch targets look very suitable for touch. So this is so funny to me because I was watching everybody on Twitter and it, it became like a Rorschach test because everybody <laughs> who believes that the iPad and the Mac are merging said, oh, look, no, so everybody who wants a touchscreen Mac said, oh, look, the touch targets are way better, bigger. That's a sure sign that it's going to be a touchscreen Mac. And then the people who just can't wait for Apple glasses are like, oh, look, they took all the sharp edges off, which uh, is a no-no in VR. So therefore, this is part of uh, Apple's uh, reality OS, VR OS. <laughs> <laughs> and then other people are like, oh, no, it looks more like an iPad. They're finally bringing the iPad and, app and Mac together. And the last people are like, I just I just want OS 10 back. Can you get off my lawn? It was just like it was a whole <laughs> slum spectrum of. Mm. So of it, it, everyone saw what they wanted. I, I yeah. you don't think touch screen Max. Oh, I think they could ship them in a heartbeat. It's like Eddie, like remember Steve Jobs said, no small tablets. People right. are gonna have to shave their fingers down. Right. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants video on an iPod. Nobody right. wants a pencil. Nobody like, and then like Eddie <laughs> Q was like, oh, but Steve, like we could get a lot more. Oh, okay, great. You guys go do it. If you screw it up, you're fired, but that's fine. Yeah. You go. I and feel I like, that could be I feel thing. like, and one of the things Apple, is, the burden on Apple is gonna be on these new Apple Silicon Macintoshes. They can't, they have to be redesigned, right? You can't just ship the MacBook Pro 13 in the same case with Apple Silicon, yeah. nobody will, it, they'll say, well, I don't. It would be an easy loss. Like, yeah, it'd be an easy loss to take yeah. to do that. You, you need to do a new design. What a great time to do touch. I just want Face I, ID. I, well, they'll yeah. definitely do that, right? I hope. I, I'm not I'm not so much excited about touch so much as I'm excited about uh, a, a, an iPad Pro that a, I, pro, iPad Pro form factor that runs macOS, because uh, with a with uh, being able to run uh, to to try out so many different like Windows uh, Windows designs, uh, never never enough that got me like hooked on Windows. But the but when when Samsung sends me like a Windows 10 tablet that looks looks and plays exactly like an iPad, meaning that when I just want a comic book reader. It will just be a comic book reader. It's something I just want to toss in my bag and use as a book reader, or toss in my bag and just use as a movie reader. But then, when I really need it to be a, to run my desktop apps, it's there as well. That is an amazingly compelling form yes. factor nowadays. And you're going to get whether, that, whether aren't it has you? touch or not. I mean, they said hope, that you could run uh, iOS apps on Mac OS, but it, it probably goes both in ways. secure yes. mode. Yeah. That's a, that's going to be a really interesting teardown when uh, when a whole bunch of engineers who do not work for Apple try to figure out what is actually physically preventing a Mac from running on an iPad Pro hardware. Not that not and I'm not talking about how do we jailbreak this so that we can install Mac OS on it, but we I'm really keen to find out the answer to the question is this simply a dogmatic question of we don't make Macs that look like iPads or is there well here are the problems we would run into if we try to make an A12 uh, based Mac inside like a really really super skinny slate like style form factor super low RAM and zero exposed PCIe lanes uh, I think are the two things that have to fix right away yeah, but still, yeah. it's that's what it, they it, fixed, we're, we're, by the way, in the developer kit, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yep. uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> isn't that <laughs> interesting? Much exactly, right? That's exactly yeah. what they did in the 16 gigs of RAM and ports. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, but by the way, I, I don't think that was too hard for them to do. So it's conceivable that silicon team is really good. It's conceivable yeah. that they could have a a very smooth gradient. From the, I'm going to start at the watch all the way up to the Mac Pro. There could be a very smooth and they said a family of SOCs, family which also SOCs. that was confusing yep. to some people because some people assume SOC means no discrete graphics even at the highest end. No, that's the beauty of it. That's yep. one of the reasons. That's one of the great benefits they're going to get. It explains why they they thumbed their nose at Nvidia for so long. They pushed Metal so hard. They struggled along with this Vega crap. Because they yeah. knew we're going to be doing GPUs. And, you know, we talked a little bit about gamers, PC gamers. Oh, they're never going to be interested in Apple Silicon. But wait till, they, wait till these game companies and the gamers see what kind of uh, GPUs Apple can put together. 120 I see, frame per second Fortnite. Yeah, I see no reason why <laughs> Apple, to assume that Apple doesn't have equally amazing GPU capability. Well, and also imagine ASIC. Like, I... Like I They've put so much money into not just the Mac Pro, but the the concept of the new Mac Pro and the ability to, for example, if you have um, a, a Apple Silicon Mac and you do a lot of Final Cut Pro work and you're like, I'm going to add a, a ProRes accelerator to it. But if you do something else, maybe there's like a dedicated math accelerator or audio engine accelerator. And we sort of lose the concept of what a GPU is. You bring home your light, your super light 
12 inch MacBook arm and you, sorry, I can't say arm anymore, Apple Silicon. And then you plug that into whatever the dock thing is. And suddenly you're driving eight, you know, 9k displays. It's, it's ludicrous what, what you can do when you start controlling your own silicon yeah, destiny. Yeah. Mm. It's great. And again, it's happening at exactly the wrong time because <laughs> PCs are dead. So I wish, I, I wish they'd done this 10 years ago. They'll have a good, they have good 10 years before uh, this really hits, but I, I honestly think that we're going to live in a different world with uh, computing. Mm, well, it's there. There's the other class of computing known as boring computers. There's there's a reason why boring fleet style cars sell <laughs> always sell oh, because people I need agree. people need people need boring stuff they don't care but about. But Apple that's doesn't make the, boring the potatoes. Of, <laughs> that's not what Apple makes. They make the oh no no I'm so, they don't I'm make sorry, I'm, Maybe I misunderstood. <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I, I thought you were talking about like Windows and like Windows tile. I, I, I don't honestly stuff. think Windows. Even even has much, uh, uh, le many legs to it. I think, honestly, uh, that's why Satya, as you said, that's why Satya Nadella runs Microsoft. It's it's going to be- We're going to have to have tools to make yeah. our glasses apps, Leo, at least for a while, though. It's hard to make glasses No, no, apps no, on but glasses. I can develop right now uh, on VS Code running on a server on a thin client. Yeah. You can do plenty of develop. You don't, yeah. there's no, and, and what's changed is it used to be somebody would sit down at their computer that this is it and everything yep. would be there but now we can see we have many computers many places that we would want access to that stuff it doesn't really make sense for uh, anything to be located in one spot are you we saying have you syncing. can run busy calc yeah. on the cloud laport you yes can run busy i am calc on i the am cloud? we have <laughs> we have syncing but syncing everybody who's tries syncing it's a kind of you know that dropbox kind of that's not that's not the future yeah. the future oh, is a single source of truth that's accessible from all your devices, and and it, there's yeah. no and it probably was doing much of the computing. No, well. you're you're absolutely right, and that that's why Microsoft is has invested so heavily in virtualization to make the hardware irrelevant, but to make sure that their software remains completely relevant. Yeah. So when you're trying to when you're when you've got a company that needs five hundred five thousand seats. And you're you come to them saying that here, but buy buy our servers instead, or better yet, buy access to our cloud our cloud uh, uh, power instead. We can add you can add ten thousand seats uh, whenever you want, and plus you won't have you won't have users who are able to screw anything up beyond the ability of a remote administrator to put things right again. So yeah, it's it it, it kind of it also makes me wonder. I don't think I saw a lot. I don't think I saw any news about Mac virtualization. Not that this is a big deal. Uh, for Apple again, they've got every other. They, they've they've got a roadmap, and I don't. That's uh, that's nothing more than a, than a detour, I think, off the main roadmap. But it would be interesting if Apple simply said that we we want the we want the Mac to have an ability and a mixed OS or mixed uh, mixed, des mixed desktop sort of shop. And if that means that we will be able to uh, we will allow to people to at least buy seats, buy virtualization licenses uh, for Mac OS, then so be it. That would be very, very yeah, interesting, interesting to me. What was interesting too is before WWDC, Apple rolled out a bunch of education updates. You know, so they typically get a bunch of stuff out of the way. And one of them that I thought was really interesting was a very Google-like thing, where they previously had multi-user for iPad for schools, and they it turned out that some like some people didn't even want that. So they have a new ability where you just pick up an iPad, you do whatever you want to do, and then it just blows your session away. The next person picks yeah. it up, and it's a whole new clean environment for them. Which again, other systems have been doing for years, but that's literally your thin client. There, you have uh, an iPad that's very capable that can push pixels around like nobody's business, but it's completely ephemeral from one student to the next. Yeah. Well, that's what happens, right? And that's, that's, yeah. the, that's clearly the future. Um, I know nobody, everybody's going kicking and screaming saying, but that's what we got away with, with away from with a one person, one PC. Isn't it ambient <laughs> computing though, Leo? It's like the Star it's Trek ambient. computer or Jarvis yeah. or Friday where we where just have, the, like you said, the no. You don't just care where the core is. I'm asking you something. Just do it for me. Right. That is what you want. <laughs> uh, you know, and Apple's still, uh, you know, Carson's saying, well, Apple could sell secure boxes. Yeah, but they don't need to be a computer. <laughs> Apple yeah. could have a very good business. They shouldn't be. They shouldn't be. Apple probably yeah. will have a very good business. I, I'd say in 2030, selling beautiful, <laughs> gleaming, chrome, secure enclave boxes that you put in your foyer. <laughs> <laughs> or in your well, safe. if you look at the three things that Tim Cook is actually willing to talk about, which probably means are the most important things that he thinks that people need to hear about Apple, it's AR and VR, it's ambient computing, and it's um, automation. And all of those things are what we talk about when we talk about the future of computing. It's right. things doing stuff for us at our command and popping up things for us to interact with when and if we need them. Yeah.
Mm. Um, it's very it's very telling that one of the what I think is one of the best technologies that Apple introduced in the past ten years, uh, back to my Mac is kind of fell by the wayside, certainly not a priority. Uh, it's mostly been rolled into features that are kind of invisible in other parts of the experience. When you get to the idea of it doesn't it doesn't matter where you are in the world or what device you're using, we are going to do all the back end stuff to make sure that you can access your files back home or back in the office if you want to. We will make sure that we can find that connection if you want to uh, run a uh, run a mirrored desktop on whatever device you're using right here and right now. That was so, such super power Powerful stuff, and I used it all the time. Admittedly, I used it on a Hackintosh Dell notebook, but <laughs> still, uh, I used it all the time too. It, it, Yep, it's it's it, it points out that Apple at some point had that discussion internally and decided that we would much rather take the feature. We would much rather ask ourselves why do people want to go back to the Mac? And if it, well, actually, it's mostly files. Great, we'll make it really really easy for them to sync into iCloud. And do they want to actually have uh, uh, open up their own desk their their desktops remotely? Okay, well, we'll make sure that there's some cross device compatibility that goes on. And we don't we don't the idea of having a fixed piece of hardware that is running uh, or uh, able to be woken up from sleep attached to a network 24 7 is not the most elegant solution to what we see as a problem yeah it's really uh, Damn, interesting plugs it all the time um <laughs> let's take a, a little break and then when we come back um there you, you guys have been busy i've been relying on you <laughs> <laughs> you guys i've been watching some of the developer uh developer -y stuff because basically Did you watch I, the ar kit for a demo yet leo not yet no see yeah. i'm doing stuff oh i'm watching God. the stuff the cool the the coolest stuff is oh, it's like I've got at least three things on my list that why the hell was this not in like the the, the two hour long like uh, like keynote? Oh, really? This is the most awesome thing ever. Oh, good. That's what I'm going to ask you about when we come back from the break. Because <laughs> I've been watching the boring stuff, you know, Swift UI, and you know, I mean, <laughs> no, but you want to code, Leo. That makes sense. That's for you. right. I now yeah. this yeah. is kind of stimulate. For years, all I did was device uh, independent code. You know, command line. Maybe a little tiny bit of GUI that didn't look like anybody's real GUI, but uh, I'm much I much more interested in that because that's the pro the point of coding for me. I'm a hobbyist is thinking about problems and solving them in code, yeah. not the painstaking. And now that I'm doing it, I really remember how bad it is drawing of screens and dragging of buttons and <laughs> yeah. oh my god shoot me now it feels like 90 percent of uh, mac code these days and certainly of ios code is gui design uh but yeah. i like the logic underneath you know i like the model i don't want the view or the view model remember two years ago when craig changed dot red to dot blue and every developer in the room went oh <gasps> <laughs> yeah it's a lot of that because so that's what i'm watching and i realize that's the bitter pill i'll have to swallow if i want to make an ios app but i do love the idea of making something that will run in the entire apple ecosystem i think that's interesting it's a fun project for me and so that's what i'm watching but you guys watch the sexy stuff so um I want to know what the future is going to hold. <laughs> Renee Ritchie, Andy Anako, uh, we are talking about, well, you know, we're talking about the good stuff, <laughs> <laughs> the juicy stuff. Our show today, thank God I had a good night's sleep last night. Our show today brought to you by my mattress. If my mattress could speak, it would be moaning and groaning. It would say, get off of me. <laughs> Leo, you're so fat. Why would you gain so much weight? No, it would be saying, Leo, come to me. I think it is. It beckons to me. Come to me. Get in Get in this lovely Casper bed with the Casper sheets and the Casper pillows. Let the glow light lull you to sleep. A beautiful world awaits. And then I start dreaming, and it's like, what am I doing? Uh, <laughs> it, look, we can't. Casper can't fix your dreams, but Casper can give you a great night's sleep. It's a sleep brand that makes... Amazing. Here it is, my beautiful. This is my new, uh, the newest Casper mattress. This is the hybrid. And by the way, that compact box I'm opening is, uh, that's a, a king size. That's the biggest they make. It's a giant mattress. You open it up, it goes, it's, it, it's like, it's, it's like in a sous vide bag. And as soon as you seal, unseal that, the air goes, and it just goes full size. But one of the things I love about Casper is no airing. I bought mattresses, much more expensive mattresses from the, you know, the mattress store where they say, well, th wait a three days before you sleep on it because we have to get all, we have to air it out. Not the Casper. It smells fresh. It feels good. So there are uh, now a number of Casper models. I want to kind of describe them for you. The original Casper mattress combines multiple supportive memory foams that does something unique. It gives you a quality sleep service with both 
the right amount of sync. Watch, see how my <laughs> my hips go in there, and then the right amount of bounce, so you get firmness. Because I, you know, my back will. Are you laughing at me sleeping? No, I'm I, no, I'm I'm saying like you know how like sometimes you watch food videos and you're really really hungry. I'm watching how you much you're enjoying that mattress. Oh, and thinking it's that so good. I really wish I had like a, a new mattress oh, and so that good. I was on it right now. My my mattress is ten years it's old. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. But I have to say, I did make a slight error because I unboxed it in the foyer. And uh, it's just not a good place to nap. Let me put it that way. Oh, no. But we do. Uh, we, we may eventually move into the bedroom, of course. Um, the breathable design, though, is nice, too, especially in these hot summer nights because it sleeps cool, regulates your body temperature throughout the night. People love the original Casper with over 20,000 reviews. On Casper, Amazon, and Google, it's now 4.8 stars. I, I don't think you can get better than that. It's rapidly becoming the Internet's favorite mattress, but that's just one. There's also the Wave, which features a patent-pending premium support system to mirror the natural shape of your body. The Essential, which saves you money. This is the one you give the kid going off to college or, you know, you get for your first place. Streamlined design at a price that won't keep you up at night. Still a great mattress, still a wonderful mattress. The Hybrid, that's the one I'm sleeping on, has the pressure relief of the award-winning foam, but it also has durable yet gentle springs, which gives me a firmer edge. Casper is amazing. We have, I love my Casper pillow, the sheets. It's just a better sleep experience all around. Now, you may say, well, that's nice, Leo. That's nice, but why should I? Because Casper, and they invented this direct-to-consumer model for mattresses. They realized early on the real expense of a mattress isn't the manufacturer, isn't the shipping, isn't the selling isn't the marketing, it's the stores. The stores market up most of the time at least doubling the price. If you didn't have mattress stores, you could save a lot of money by selling direct to customers. That's what Casper does. Now, a lot of customers, when they first said this, but I want to try before I buy, Casper said, okay, here's what we're going to do. 100 nights. You get to sleep on it for as long as 100 nights. Anytime in the first 100 nights, if you say it's not for me, we will come and get it. You don't have to jam it back in that box. We will pick it up. We will take it off your hands. We will refund you every penny. There is absolutely no risk. And I don't know about, I mean, for a free trial, that's the longest I've ever heard of. 100 nights, more than three months. Free shipping, painless returns in the U.S. and Canada, Renee. Get a Casper mattress today. I always say Canada, Renee. Every time I say Canada, I say Renee. <laughs> Canada, Renee. I've got so many Casper products. I really appreciate their Canadian service. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Casper. You can save $100 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash MacBreak. Use the offer code MacBreak, if you will, at checkout so they know you saw it here. 100 bucks just for saying, I saw it on MacBreak. Casper, C-A-S-P-E-R dot com slash Mac break offer code is Mac break as well terms and conditions apply of course it is so nice <sighs> in fact I'm going to go back to bed right now you guys take over <laughs> you guys take over um that's so. great. Welcome to Comic Book Weekly. Uh, I know it. That's what I got to stop you. <laughs> now, DC you can is find digital, it. going to a digital approach now of a very controversial uh, cutting their ties to diamond distributors. Like, Renee, were you as freaked out as I was about that announcement? All I'm going to say is that 2020 is the worst DCU movie I've, I've oh seen. Oh, so my far. God. I know. I think Thanos uh, <laughs> is, is going to snap his fingers any minute now. Oh, it would be a blessing at this point. It might if, be, if huh? you can find it, Leo, uh, Matthew Panzerino retweeted something on the AR Kit 4.0 demos that shows uh, a visualization of this new technology they have, which basically pulls down everything from Apple Maps, including all the look around features, along with the point cloud of the vicinity that you're in, all the information you've acquired about that vicinity and like orientation of your device and everything. And it just... It's sort of mind blowing how step by step, a uh, year after year, they've been rapidly expanding AR kit. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm sure for obvious reasons, but just the, the the amount of stuff they're showing off this year is ridiculous. So it's a video, right? It's a Twitter video. Yeah, he retweeted it a couple of days ago. Okay. Um, AR. If you can get past all the bread. AR kit. In his timeline. AR kit four. I do not think it's possible for anyone who doesn't Hoover up what's going on in AR to internalize how wild. This is. This is the metaverse building equivalent to he just tweeted it out. Explain. This is a he's retweeting Joel Bernstein. Um, and I take it this is the Apple presentation you were talking about. Yeah. Without worrying about yeah. any of this complexity. Yeah, well I just missed it because it was only So when using geo tracking, using geo -tracking So let's see the here's the, the video. Map data. 
from Apple Maps around your current location. Part of this data is a localization map that contains feature points of the surrounding area that can be seen from the street. Then, with the localization map, your current location and images from Well, this device, is just map info. This is not AR kit. That's, the rest of it is all, AR, is, is all AR kit. So you mean I can take all this data that Apple's been generating for years for maps and, yeah. and their version of, what do they call it? They don't call it Street View, but... Uh, look around. Look around. Yeah. And it's now available as data for my augmented reality app? Yes. Whoa. That's why For he's experience, talking about, if you don't make apps, but experience, yeah. That's why he's talking about uh, the metaverse, right? Yeah. So uh, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> Grand, the Grand Theft Auto, Auto Cambridge, Massachusetts. <laughs> I hope more than that. Well, the metaverse implies that you would be uh, able to put on your Apple branded AR glasses and be in Cambridge, right? And I could go and meet Andy at the MIT flea market and we could wander around, right? It would it would be it would be an interesting application to say that I don't uh, if all I have to do is transmit the part that is Andy and I could I don't have to transmit the part, the part behind him but we're not talking about chat here that, that that would still be a really inefficient way of doing it um, I think this is one of those really great features where uh, the opportunities for a really really clever developer to make something great with it are apparent enough that you just go ahead and do it and then let those let those folks create those opportunities like imagine an architectural app where you want to figure out like what will it what will happen to shadow lines if we put this building here or what what will happen if uh, i want to i'm considering uh, uh visiting this location or having a music festival in this location at this time of year uh, and also i have access to uh, to uh, 50 years of daily weather data for that date in the date in the year and now i can actually figure out uh, not only figure out what it's going to look like but also model what the traffic flow is going to be um as to what actual consumers are going to benefit from it beyond look around anybody's guess I, I think i think that some features are there for this is such a this is such an interesting we've we've spent so much money developing this data set it we would not be realizing the value of this data set if all we did was use it to enhance maps we want to enhance the entire platform and the only way to enhance the entire platform is to make a new resource available to developers and that's why they're making this data set available so uh do I need a new iPad Pro with LiDAR to take advantage of this? I know as That's the developer, better. I don't, but I would probably, it would work better. It's better. Well, it's going to be in stages. Like right now it's on the iPad Pro because they just needed to get LiDAR out into the world. And they showed some demos now with the new depth API and with the new heat map for, you know, measuring depth, all the things that you can do with that. And everybody presumes that's coming to the iPhone, you know, this year and to Apple Glasses eventually. But, you know, just, just to make Andy's Mac Break Weekly experience complete, you could imagine like <laughs> Pokemon Go or Wizards United where you they are actually interacting with the real world. It's not just a, like a, a digital thing, happenstantially layered on top of you but it's running around trees it's climbing buildings you look up and there's the hogwarts dragon curled around the you know the bank yeah. uh, on your street down the corner uh, there's king kong on the empire state building because i've always wanted to see <laughs> king kong on the empire yeah. and they announced that too they announced that you can place ar objects right now with ios 14 in what they call points of interest like like major geographical locations around the world this is interesting yeah, so this is was... a this is a essentially a heat map that shows not Temperature, but depth. Yeah. The closer to me, yep. it's cooler. The farther away, it's hotter. Uh, and that is a smooth gradient. That is very... Yes. So yeah. that's why you could place... And totally occluded. Like, you can you can do full object occlusion within exactly. that, yep. that's, that map. Wow. That's one of the biggest... Th one of the biggest steps forward for AR is for the ability for, okay, your Pokemon to walk behind a chair <laughs> and the chair is covering up where uh, is is uh, occluding uh, a, a character that, or an object that's supposed to be walked behind it. It's really, really cool. It was it, it was very, very cool to say, everybody gather around, uh, was it three years ago, four years ago, WWC, gather around this strangely tech wood grain <laughs> textured table. Yeah. <laughs> and play ping and, pong. And, and enjoy our AR experience. 
experience. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't, don't move the phone off the table. It has to be there. But it's, it's going to be, this is, see, this is like, uh, this is a great uh, look forward looking thing for when we do have the sort of a HoloLens style wearable AR glasses where it's not just projecting a small piece of information that's useful. It's not just uh, displaying a widget. It is actually doing magic leap sort of stuff because that's when you get things like, I'm going to put a display on that wall over there that simply reminds me of like when someone is online or not because I need to talk to that person. And that's when you get interesting, uh, I will say hippie-like, but really still very, very interesting interfaces like uh, like what uh, Google showed off at I.O. a few years ago but never delivered on, saying that, well, yes, we yes we could when, when giving you map directions that you're, that you're following as you're walking, just give you like floating arrows to go around things. But wouldn't you rather be yeah. like following a fox that just looks yeah. the foxes and, and the fox is waiting at the street corner and sitting and like cleaning its paws because he's waiting for you to catch up and then he's going to like actually go left to show you the keep following the fox isn't that more interesting because this it taps into uh it taps into software that is that's in our brains that is not that is pre-language you know there was a time yes. which we didn't have turn left at this next next intersection make sure that you're on elm street but simply that oh well i'm going to i i, I know that there's a fire over there and i want to go to the fire so i'm just going to walk until the fire is, is getting bigger and bigger in my mind's eye that's not just cute it's not just the the ultimate caveman skeuomorphism this is making things that are <laughs> In things that you you can infer how it works that you're you're wired up to simply understand that this is what you're meant to do as opposed to learning a clever new interface. So this is why this sort of stuff could be uh, quite transformative. So you're going to your point earlier, Leo, and Andy's point now. The uh, Reality Kit has uh, has also added um, video as a texture, so you can do things like yeah. place a screen on the wall and watch your TV in AR, but also uh, map the screen to like a, an object and have uh, an animated face, or map it to water yeah, wow. like a river and have an animated texture. So it, it's just ramping up the realism that you can deliver, and also the certain like the opportunistic uh, interfaces we all see in the movies, right? Like the screen just appears in front of him and he taps it. And it's really the gestures that are doing the work. But as a human, we relate to whatever the physical object is in front of us. So if you're just mapping a video of an interface and reacting to what we're moving our hands on, it just makes that experience nicer. And that's, yeah. that's again, shipping in iOS 14. Watch as I run this augmented reality vase all over this chair. <laughs> <laughs> um, the power to be your best. <laughs> so, uh, uh, it's apparently doing ray casting. Uh, I don't see any lighting effects, but it, at least it knows. That's what the, Carrie's it's, it's, bedroom it's, looked it's, like when she was a kid. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Now, the face is always at attention to the fa to the right, surface of that right. object. It's just it's like impressive. you're you're running that around the chair. Yeah, that's pretty amazing, and the and the objects moving. Uh, this uh, means I would guess that lidar in every uh, future Apple device. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, and it's privacy respecting too, which in ways that regular cameras have been problematic in the right. past, which is a nice benefit for Apple. Yeah. Because yeah, the, the lidar and radar are really important technologies because you can't. It's it's very clever to say, hey, get, this is this uh, this camera is this device is a camera that's taking pictures at 60 frames per second. As soon as people say camera taking pictures, they don't want any part of it, right. particularly if you're in the room with it. But when you say, well, no, it's actually radar. It's a, so it's not actually seeing anything. It's only taking really really high depth like distance measurements and let's not and let's not mention that if it's sufficiently sufficient technology that it's actually mapping everybody's faces as they go in so they're getting much much more information yeah. than, than pictures but but you know what i mean here's uh the face mapping uh demo that you were talking about and this is more than memojis right this you could you could map it onto uh i mean you can make uh what is it um snapchat filters yeah wow <laughs> wow that's exciting I must say that is a breakthrough technology. <laughs> I think I think it's more it's more imp one of the many things that are impressive for this are when it becomes stuff like uh, uh, a kit that you, a, a a when it becomes like a plug in for iMovie, uh, not not even Final Cut, but just I, w I want to make a movie, but it's only me and my two friends, and neither of them are dogs or orcs. And I really, I really need a dog in this scene. Let's just make, sure, let's just uh, do motion, uh, like on the fly motion capture, yeah, so that this character, right? Uh, that's the sort because I, I, I keep coming back to how wonderful, how incredible it is that you have all of these YouTube creators that are well on, uh, in their twenties or in their teens who grew up with non-linear editing and, and high definition.
high-definition camera right on their phones. And just like I learned how to write because I had access to word processors from the, from basically the first time I tried to use the, I tried to learn how to write, uh, which meant which made me which which gave me certain advantages that other generations didn't have. Once we get into the sort of thing where now the generation that uh, the, the generation Z or double Z or whatever they're calling it these days, the, this generation says whenever they have creative ideas that involve actually i really want the story i'm telling to take place in space but imagine that uh that the mongol hordes are a space conquering race and and 10 minutes later or 20 minutes later just by downloading some stock 3d imagery or by building it themselves their story that they're telling is, is taking place wherever they want it to happen i'm so excited to see what happens when that becomes casual and free yeah uh, what else did you see that you like? Fill me in. <laughs> Save me uh, the time. <laughs> yeah. One one of the one of the biggest things was uh, just uh, that there is one. There, I think there's only one area in which Apple is objectively failing. They are not doing the job and is reaching a crisis point, and it, it is wrong that they aren't moving, making visible steps to fix it. And that's the app review process, uh, making it so uh, so opaque and so nope, we made this decision, and now you are powerless to change it. Uh, the they made some announcements that are basically saying that number one. It if we have a problem with your app, we will still allow you to do bug fixes. So we're not going to say that uh, a huge. security problem yeah. a security problem has to stick because we don't like the way that you're doing it using a controller. Uh, and number two, they are giving the they are at least giving lip service to saying that. Uh, now we are giving you more opportunities to debate why we why we made this why your app should not be uh, affected by this change, and also not only talk it's, it's almost like a, looking at the, a change to the constitution, saying that not only that but you can also argue that this rule itself is bogus and you need to change it, and the idea that they're they're even putting that into like a public uh, a public statement during WWDC shows that they are aware that they've been they've been hugely dropping the ball on this and that they need to make changes. I thought that that was one of the biggest pieces of news from WWDC because that's, that is the thing that whether developers are complaining in public or complaining in private, when I'm uh, talking to friends of mine, that is the one thing that makes my jaw drop every single time that says that, wow, you make one of the most important, uh, and you're, 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 there are four people that I can, t I can say this of, you are making one of the most important and popular apps on the Mac platform. And Apple is just screwing you around and you're giving, you're being given, no, uh, no uh, indication that they're even thinking about this carefully. That they're just simply a low-level person. Uh, they saw like a red light come up on a on a panel, so they pressed the abandonate <laughs> button, and that's and you can't do anything about it. And it's always shocked me every single time. I am so glad to see that at least. We'll see if this actually actually pays off, but I'm so glad to see that Apple is is re recognizing that they should probably not be screwing over developers quite uh, so yeah. gleefully as they have been yeah. in the past. I didn't have a chance to see it all, but I think there were some IAP changes too that people said were positive coming out of WWDC. What's the yeah. IAP in-app purchases? Yeah, the, uh, in, so, you know, so the IAP, yeah, the in-app purchases. Yeah. Some people seemed I didn't have a chance to follow up on it, but some people seemed happy with some of the changes that Was were being made there. Was this all precipitated by the fight with Basecamp and... DHH over uh, hay, or is it just, it's just um, time. exacerbated by? I mean, yeah. like I, th I think I think a lot of things. Some like of it's we've, also as the a society EU. we've had enough. Well, yeah. no, like also like we we're, we've been stuck at home for months. The entire world is yeah. insane, and like an app an app review letter is just too much at this point. That's it. I and can't take it anymore. Yeah. I, I think that's true. Like I think there's so many things in our society that have been bad for so long, and I'm not making any false equivalencies no, no. about where app review we're relates all to any of the other snapping. things. But yeah. We've Everything's, had it. It's done. Every the last. We don't want our like Google YouTube TV is raising its prices. I saw Twitter explode this morning. Like yeah. we have just <laughs> had enough. Yeah. As a society, yeah. we're yeah. saying this far, no further. You will yeah. not make. You will not make us pay anymore yeah yeah my kid is playing taking clarinet lessons from a second house all day i'm gonna be a man at somebody in apple it's gonna be you <laughs> yeah i did see that somebody tweeted that his kid had taken up uh, violin lessons and his apple watch said i hear a siren so <laughs> <laughs> did you hey, fall down he's a critic did, fall down? <laughs> did you just We're in judo class did you fall down uh, the, the Statler and Waldorf, Waldorf app for the for the Apple Watch. Somebody <laughs> said that they've been working on the uh, soap app since before COVID-19. Apparently, they've always yeah. been into hand washing. So then why is there no brush your teeth app? I mean, I give Kevin Lynch a huge <laughs> amount of credibility. I mean, he was the Flash guy for a very long time. But where is my brush your teeth app? I agree. <laughs> Can it only be a matter of time? You're happy about sleep, though, right? Micah's yeah. so happy about that. Yeah. 
Um, I, and I heard some people are complaining, I, I'm myself included initially, that it doesn't do as much as other sleep apps. Like other sleep apps will show you uh, light sleep, heavy sleep, right. REM sleep. Right. But when I asked about it, they said like they have no found, they, they have no understanding how they're getting those numbers. They're and they don't want to put Apple's name on anything <laughs> that doesn't. Like, yes. is it, because they know they'll get all sorts, like everything will be scrutinized by every scientist in the world. So they want to make sure that if they do ever offer that, it's like those, those numbers are provable using as many scientific models as they possible. They don't, I'll tell you the other reason, uh, private. Privacy. The one of the, the so the guy uh, who came up with a lot of this is Philippe Kahn, uh, formerly of Borland and, and Turbo Pascal. The guy invented yep. the smartphone camera. Uh, his latest business, Motion X, is all about accelerometers and taking data uh, and apply and using his data sets for machine learning. Uh, I talked to him uh, on Triangulation a couple of years ago when he was just shipping these. And uh, they're sold under the Serta Beautyrest brand, I think. These paddles that go under your mattress. I've had them for some time that that give you all of that information. Deep sleep, light sleep, REM, um, breath, uh, heart rate, um, you know, resting heart rate, uh, all of that stuff. And, and I've had that for some time. I've also had this Aura Ring, which actually probably does know a little bit more because it's right on your finger, so it can actually measure your temperature, your heart rate. I don't know if it gets breathe; it couldn't get breathing, but but they ba Philippe said it's based on machine learning models. They collect mm -hmm. millions and millions of data points, and over time they can kind of understand what they're seeing. And I have to say that the Serta paddles and the Ring pretty much agree, you know, within say 10, 20 percent. Uh, the amount of time I spent in deep sleep and stuff. And I think Apple may also want to dodge that bullet because in order for them to get those, uh, to get that kind of uh, learning, A, they're just catching up. They're just starting now. And B, they'd have to kind of collect data from people, a lot of they data. They did it people. for dancing, Leo. I mean, they can detect dancing different legs is and awesome. arms <laughs> for dancing. Dancing is awesome. Yeah. Dance, dance, and dance. And that is the first time I've ever seen a presenter at any tech conference dance. <laughs> We're gonna play the Jonathan Morrison, uh, Jonathan. Uh, well, uh, what's his, uh, Jonathan Mann video again, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> what? Didn't I, I think? I think when uh, when Steve Jobs announced the, the the determination of iOS nine, didn't he dance on that cardboard coffin? That was wild. Wrong. That was wild. I had never seen that before. Ben <laughs> Thompson put to. that in his Stratechery <laughs> column about yeah. all this. Uh, the funeral for Mac OS. Nine, I had never seen before. And there's that GIF of Tim Cook dancing at, at uh, the, oh, the yeah, Apple concert. Yeah, 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 you too. All right, so there's been some dancing. I wouldn't necessarily call that dancing, dancing. Oh, true, okay, true. <laughs> yeah. uh, and actually, Steve but does Jules not... Jules did it at, uh, at the keynote. Jules was demonstrating the Apple Watch dancing. That she was, was very, job. very well done. I was impressed. <laughs> yeah. The uh, the funeral for... Uh, here, let me play a little bit of this. I had never... Uh, you, you guys remember this? I, I guess I wasn't at yep. this. <laughs> This was the funeral. This for is Mac the Undertaker OS. from wrestling, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. That's his theme. Yes. They have a coffin, and it ain't cardboard, Andy. They have it was, a yeah. fancy coffin on stage. They got the organ music. There's fog. <laughs> I I don't. Final I, tap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and All I need is Stonehenge coming down, and then Steve opens the coffin, pulls out a giant box. <laughs> Mac OS 9 and reads its eulogy, which is hysterical. I'm, this was 18 years ago. Or no, more than that. Yeah, 18 years ago, May 6, 2002. Mac OS 9 was a friend to us all. <laughs> he worked tirelessly on our behalf. Are we sure Bolts didn't write this? Huh? I don't know. It's very funny. It's very funny. Um, it, it it made the point quite effectively. Yes. Anybody, any developer who thought, that, oh, I bet that I can get, I can still get by without having to support OS 10 for a little while. Oh no 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 no, no it's no, over. No, and no. it wasn't. By the way, he had it was long ago had been supplanted by OS 10, but he just wanted to tell everybody stop, yeah. stop, <laughs> stop, stop. And I think the coffin, he puts a rose on the coffin, and I think, I think it actually descends into, into the. Into the stage. I did that for North today. I made a tiny Canadian coffee coffin for North. <laughs> there it goes. Bye bye they coffin. Say, they say late at night on the Apple campus when the moon is full, <laughs> you can hear a howling <laughs> reverberating off of those curved walls. Well, then we got to do that for Mac OS 10. It's over. It's 11. Yep. They took it to 11.
I think that this is if you're going to do it, this is the time. Yeah, makes yep. sense. Yeah, no, this is this is so significant that it really is almost like a, a relaunch of the platform. If anything, I think that they were a little bit conservative uh, because if they're if they're going to be this disruptive, and I mean that in the in the neutral sense of the word, they may as well go for broke. Uh, but I'm so glad that they have made all of these changes because that one of the reasons why I was for the pa for the past few years uh, less last year that uh, I've been worried about the future of the Mac was that my god the Mac Finder and the Mac UI looks so frumpy yeah. it looks it it looks like the first 10 minutes of that movie where like the male or the female nerd is like clearly the the, the costume department said okay now remember in a half a half hour into the movie like they're going to they're going to like take all these elocution lessons they're going to get a whole new wardrobe or they're going to find out that they're a prince so we got to make sure that they look really, really <laughs> dumpy at the very, very beginning. And that's what Mac OS looked like compared to every other operating system that I've seen. Yeah. So I'm glad. Yeah. So that's you've, uh, if, if nothing else, Apple really, really achieved the, the, the uh, achieved uh, being able to com convince people that, no, we're not just hanging on to the Mac as a development platform for iOS and watchOS. We really do believe it. They've been saying it all along, but I've been, I'm sure that I've said this time and time again on the show. But what I've been looking for is give me a sign. Don't just keep telling me. Right. Actually, show me proof that you intend to keep keep something known as a Macintosh uh, for the, at least the next five years. Do we have any wanna... reason to believe Ming Chi Kuo? <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, <laughs> even saying it. Oh, before out we loud, switch this, can I just say that I do yes. want to sneak in and just let a little bit of the air out of the tires of the new messages and FaceTime app yes. icons, just a little bit, because they're they are so <laughs> puffy compared to everything else. They, they look are like marshmallows. <laughs> Do you so you make you've them all installed the, the developer uh, preview? Yes. So I haven't, and I I'm gu guessing Andy hasn't. I haven't. Yeah. I, I have rather. Oh, you have. Yeah. So tell me what you think of it. Uh, start with Renee. What do you, do you is it? Pre you, you think it's uh, inflated? <laughs> no, I I really like like overall. I really really like it. It's, it's it is refreshed. It is lighter. It's it's like the, there's better affordance because everything is a little bit more space. It can breathe. I think the completely transparent menu bar is a little bit bitsy. Like it, it lacks the cohesiveness of an actual bar, but you can hide it now, which is great. And I think some of the new icons are fine, but I think overall um, the watch gets to have round icons and Apple TV gets to have rounded rectangle icons and iOS has those super lips icons. And I think it's a disservice to the Mac to let to have them lose their own distinction that they've had for years. And that could be like arbitrary shapes or angled rectangle or something that lets the Mac have its own identity and just make them the same old super ellipses that are on iPhone. So I, I, I don't think all of the icons are bad. I think I think some are flatter and some are are puffier and they should normalize all of that. But in general, I think the 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 switching the icons to be exactly like Mac or sorry, shaped like like iPhone and iPad apps is a, a service to the Mac. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I I'm not a design guy, so I don't I don't have any strong feelings one with the other. It definitely looks a little. Um, it is interesting. Like you can choose your wallpaper to be that one, which is just like iOS, but they also have a traditional Mac like a picture of. Oh, they do have a picture um, of Big Sur. Yeah, oh. of Big Sur that you can use instead. Oh. You get the and both right. of them are working light and dark mode. Oh, that's interesting. So choose your choose your allegiances. Are you hashtag Team iPhone background or hashtag yeah. Team Mac background? Because the iPhone background mm -hmm. is the one we've all seen, which is abstract yeah. layers of color to sort of simulate Big Sur, the water, the mountains, the you know ocean. But the power uh, of the beauty. The power of the beauty. <laughs> those I gotta say, those bars are big. Those uh, icon bars are. Gi ginormous. Do you want to touch them, Leo? I do. I'm them? trying yeah. to touch them right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I absolutely accept that people are going, like Renee said, that people are reading into these design changes, both on iOS and macOS, the way they want. It really does look like they're making this much more touch friendly, uh, whether that's whether that's to have simply to have visual consistency with iOS or whether that really is the idea of we're going to need that the, the title bars of these windows to be grabbable uh, by a fingertip as opposed to a mouse or, or a trackpad. I, I see a lot of error around there. I see a lot of transparency around there that I'm still trying to get used to. I see them trying to 
minimize the visual impact of the menu bar as if part of that message is to say, don't look for features up there. You're supposed to look for features within within content windows. Um, I like it. I, I, I did find it more off-putting after I finished in, uh, my first day with it than I did this morning when I was messing around with it. Um, it re I really think that the – I'm trying to figure out if – uh, using Safari is going to be the biggest tell to what Apple wants a, a Mac app to look like. And if so, I'm kind of hoping that Apple dials it back a little bit. They spent a lot if, of time it, on Safari. Yeah, it, it just well, it just feels like remember the difference between iOS seven and let's say iOS nine when I, when they absolutely yeah. decided that okay it's time to get rid of the original uh, iPhone interface and start updating a little bit it was stark it was it was like a uh, like a salt flat where there was it, it didn't, it, it, exactly no let's get rid of all the colors like let's make all of like the text really really skinny let's not give you any sort of indication of uh, one thing on this screen is more important than something other. That something is, is trying to get your attention, um, and but they saw them. You saw them dial that that back over the next couple of years. I think that we're going to. I hope that. Well, naturally, we're going to see a certain uh, once once it's once it's off uh, off the off the ranch and into the hands of. Uh, not not real people yet, but closer one step closer to real people in the form of developers uh, who can give lots of feedback. Um, it's it, I'm I'm keen to see how real people react to it when the public beta hits uh, very very soon because uh, if it be, if it doesn't feel like a Mac, you've you've kind of you've kind of messed it up, uh, and it still feels like a Mac, but it is a big big step. Yeah. A um, couple of things. The privacy forward very much. In fact, there's a privacy report that tells you what trackers are on a page. A lot of people yeah. run Ghostry yep. or other <laughs> plugins on other browsers to do that. That's nice. Apple yeah. is also, and there's some real consternation in the ad community about this, uh, essentially giving you a pop-up that says, hey, you know, you have an, uh, there's an ad tracker that's being used to deliver personalized ads for you. Do you want to allow that or you want to ask the app not to do that? And by surfacing yeah. that, this has always been, apparently always have been in the settings, but it's deep within, so nobody knows about it. By surfacing that as part of this new user permissions dialogue that all apps will have on iOS, uh, there's a lot of concern that Apple, I by killing it, is like, going to kill its IDFA. It's ID I think like a, a lot of that I thought was like because a bunch of people who I see complain about nothing but ads and the and <laughs> the tracking and all goes on are suddenly like worried about the ad companies because Apple's doing it and to me that just smells of like Apple headlines and I think Apple like Apple does this they did this with battery shaming and all we saw was Adobe right. apps in the battery shamer and then they fixed it they did it with Bluetooth and all you saw was all these apps surreptitiously asking for your Bluetooth information and they fixed it and they just did it with the clipboard and we saw TikTok asking for the clipboard every three seconds and they fixed it to me it's like that that's what you do you 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 uh, you disclose and you get consent and the ad industry if they like if they have any pride at all in their business model if they think it's a good business model that it's good for them and it's good for us then they should have no problem with us actually being aware of what's happening on those web pages. And if they think there's issues yeah. with it, this highlights them and they can they can uh, fix it. I did hear, you know, I do agree with Ben Thompson that it does make it harder for smaller competitors because Google and Facebook have a tremendous capacity to serve you first party cookies that you know, startup advertising and smaller networks just simply can't compete with. And so it's e even with GDPR, it's easier for Google and Facebook to handle that than it is for the small companies. But I still feel like looking at it from the business point of view is the wrong end of it. You look at it from the user point of Absolutely. view. Absolutely. And yeah. for the user, this is a huge win. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And also the commitment that Apple has to this is very, very important. I, I've always thought that uh, I've always thought that one of the problems that Apple had in its, oh, we're the only company that really cares about privacy. The problem with that messaging was that, oh, but we really don't care if people keep continuing to track you and collect information through our, webs through our web browser or through anybody else's web browser. This absolutely is reversal of that uh not only because this is exactly the sort of uh position that is important the, uh, in this day and age to not simply say oh 
I don't know if you know it, but there's like 14 trackers after you. Uh, Safari is like, let's let me give you the report on exactly what battle what the battle is is like behind the scenes right now. Here is every single instance of uh, a website that's trying to get information and how they're trying to do it, and letting you have control of the situation. Uh, and so, just uh, just this week, um, there are a whole bunch of new like hardware based web APIs that got uh, that got released that Apple has announced they're not going to support simply because it allows finger. It, it's an opportunity for for extended fingerprinting to identify you even though you've taken measures to make sure that your browser and your incident can't be uh, can't be fingerprinted this is an important thing for the safari brand apple has to for everything that apple does they have to say here is what i know the chrome is the most powerful browser in the world i know that firefox is the most popular open browser in the world but we have safari and here is what here's the unique advantage that we can deliver uh, and then <laughs> it's not only uh, it will not bog down your computer as though it's been thrown into a scottish bog uh, but it will also not only will it not drain your battery, but also it is the most uh, proactively uh, security oriented browser that you can install right now. Yeah. And I'll add to that a little bit in saying that, you know, and not not really Google's fault, but Google's in a position now that Microsoft used to be in that they are so popular that people are coding for Chrome rather than coding yeah. for the open web. <laughs> and it's not that there aren't web standards, it's that they're like more like web suggestions and every yeah. vendor um, implements them in a way that best suits that company because it's just natural and Google sees everything as a web app and Apple sees everything as a native app and they have different interpretations. But the end result is there's a lot of stuff that doesn't work as well on Safari and the only sort of ability Apple has to affect change beyond that is that the WebKit engine runs everything on iPhone and iPad, which are hugely popular. Right. So by doing things like this, they sort of force the web a little bit in their direction too. We haven't yeah. talked about, you know, oh, go ahead. So just to quickly, you notice that you don't see very many uh, uh, websites right now, uh, at this point that say, ooh, I'm not going to let you proceed until you turn your ad blocker off or whitelist us. You see it sometimes, but whereas this would be a way that the, the entire ad community could say, no, we are going to force you to turn off ad blockers because otherwise we are not going to allow any content to, pr to pursue in any way, shape, or form. Because they, they tried that initially, but they got the metrics back and say, when we make somebody do something to read an article that, we ha that, that this person hasn't even read yet, their reaction is to leave and go to one of the other 18 terabillion uh, pages that are on like the with internet. GDPR, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So they're not. They're, they're not. Apple is doing something they know that they can do. It's not as though you're going to see a pop up saying that I'm sorry, Safari is not supported by by this content. Please switch to a less a less in security intense browser phone. instead. Yes. Yeah. Please use an oh, okay. Android phone okay. if you okay. want. Okay. Okay. We're going to do this <laughs> no, now. But I mean, Ray, I don't no, know. No, I'm just I saying. I, I, I wasn't planning on doing this right now. But no, 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 all, do all this I'm right saying now, we can do this they, right now. No, no, I'm just saying because like even if you sw even if you change your default web browser on iOS, it's still the WebKit rendering engine. Like there is like the, yeah. it only goes so yeah. far down that stack. Yeah, it's such a good thing that, you know, we don't have things like apps on iOS, you know, stealing information from the clipboard. We never see that No, no, that I agree with iOS. you. I'm just saying, like, they, they, they have, they, they have a, an unusual amount of control to wield this as a weapon yes. on iOS exactly. devices. Yeah, and look, what, look exactly. what Apple did. We There wasn't just uh, TikTok. It's like 56 other apps that were just saying, hey, can we look at, <laughs> let me look at your clipboard. What are you doing there? What are you doing? That's good. That's great. Apple's no, so I mean, it's yeah. it's. It's terrible when it happens with things like, hey, you know, or some of our friends. There are some really bad apps that Apple's in a position to go, okay, bye bye. You bye -bye. go make Chrome, app, bye -bye. Chrome OS yeah. apps now. You know? Yeah, they're only the only issue is when it looks like it's in in their bit for their business reasons as yes. opposed to to protect users. And sometimes right. it does look that way. I maybe they can make an argument that it's not, but it does look that way. Yeah. Uh, how credible is Ming Chi Kuo? Is, is he's saying? He's the analyst who sends out these notes, and he's saying there will be uh, a 13.3-inch MacBook Pro running Apple Silicon and an iMac. I have to say, he says it's a 24-inch iMac, which makes me think, what? Why would they? It doesn't exist yet. Yeah. Why would they do that? Yeah. But it is an all-new form factor, and that they would both launch probably in the third or fourth quarter of this year, or early 2021. I like that because Apple's not nostalgic, but those I believe were the first um, Intel Macs that shipped. Oh, that's MacBook interesting. Pro and the iMac, which oh, is an interesting, interesting mirror. Yeah, mm. I'd be I, uh, I'm I'm just guessing here, 
but I, I'm just I would be surprised if Apple did not want to make the MacBook Air or the MacBook Nothing one of the first Macs out True. the gate, because True. people are buying that people are buying that not for power and not for flexibility. They're buying it for freedom from physical uh, tethers to to this this cursed ground, and the ability to simply say, by the way, the MacBook that used to get 10 hours of battery life now gets 14 to 15 hours of battery life. That is immediately yeah. convincing people that this is why we this is one of the reasons why we switched to arm it is flying the flag for I, i'm i'm trying to figure out if i'm just being sort of like an apple marketing dupe by calling it apple silicon instead of arm i'm trying i'm still navigating that choice so i'm sorry they never said x86 that's how this is the way i mentally justified yeah, is that but, steve announced power pc to intel but they do have arm 64 on the technical slides it's just it's it's not an arm they said arm the in the uh, state Cortex of the union chip. yeah yeah they said yeah but, uh, but, but not i like I think it's important to say... It's not a say, Cortex chip. It's an it's, Apple chip. Yes, it's not ARM as delivered by <laughs> Qualcomm. Yeah, arm. It's, it's, or uh, by ARM. Well, ARM doesn't deliver anything, right? No, but they make the Cortex that people can just fab if they want right. to, like the Cortex yep. design, they and design Apple's it. not using the Cortex no. design. So it, like, yep. it's a nebulous thing because like, it's not like... Uh, like it, it, do people insist on calling AMD an x86 chip? Most of them just call it an AMD chip, right. and they're fine with it. But I think yeah. Apple. I, like, I think Apple Silicon is fine, and it doesn't. It is a marketing term, Andy. But I think it's, it's also fine. distinctive, yeah, distinguished from ARM. I wish they would announce their new name sooner than later, so we don't have to keep yeah. saying it, because it's a lot of salamis. trionic. Maybe it's trionic. <laughs> yeah, they'll they'll what, have a what? new n naming yeah. and numbering scheme, I presume, to distinguish them from the iOS chips, or maybe not. Maybe it'll just be the A15 maybe. or something. X14. Yeah. Just go right after the X86 heart. <laughs> oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, well, I want I I the reason I ask actually this is this is for me. I'm I'm asking for a friend uh, because <laughs> I I don't think I want to buy another computer of any kind until I see these, and I can hold out till the end of the year. Yeah. I don't know if I can hold out till next. But you're not summer. Alex. See, like Alex wants no part of a brand new ARM machine that he doesn't know how Final Cut and all his rendering stuff right. runs on. Yeah. He's much rather you buy it, Leo, and tell him in the, la in the next yeah. few years and I'd much how rather painful it is. And he then buys the Mac <laughs> Pro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he yeah. could tell me about that. So we're different people. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I honestly, I've, I've been getting this question. I'm sure we've all been getting this question yeah. like a, a million times for it by people who read less, listen to us, or, you know, join us for dinner. Uh, but I keep telling people that if, if you need a Mac this year, uh, and w maybe if you can wait until the fall to see what kinds of hardware Apple releases as this part of this first wave, do that. Uh, but I wouldn't wait a year and have if 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 I'm stuck with like a 10 year old Mac that is not getting the job done that I cannot edit videos the way that I want to do it. I can't run Photoshop the way I want to do it or any other reason like that. I still feel as though any Intel Mac you buy this year is going to have the five at least the five year uh, utility life that I expect to get from any brand new computer. Yeah, as Jaws told Gruber on the talk show. He bought a 16-inch MacBook Pro for his daughter because she's going to college this fall. She needs something now. Yeah. Uh, Jason Snell yeah. said he did the same thing for his daughter, although it was just a MacBook Air. He couldn't afford the 16. But uh, but <laughs> and actually, a MacBook Air is a perfect college uh, computer. But I do the yeah. same thing sense. because I have to run Final Cut. Like I depend on running Final Cut, and I'm sure it's going to run on the R Max. Yes. But I I know like every plugin I buy, everything yes. is going right. to be exactly the way that I need it to run for the next few years. And I can look at people on Twitter and see how it's working for them, and then make a decision <laughs> after. Like I'm just don't buy that Reve board. I'll be the guinea pig. I will buy the Reve board. I would buy an Air in a heartbeat. I would buy a, a, yeah. an yeah. Apple Silicon Air in a heartbeat. An Apple Silicon Mac Pro, I would stick with Intel for well, a little what while. if they did Honestly. a MacBook Pro 13 that was almost as thin as an Air, like thinner than the existing one, which they could do, right? And had 20-hour battery life. That might be, and had no bezel. That might be, pre you know, so it's I would want it, but my but I need Final Cut. And so that's yeah. like, that's you know, just, if it doesn't I, run I think Final anyone Cut, on a Pro workflow. Yeah, yeah. Like you talk yeah, to Brianna Wu and they barely support the th the 3D app she uses on Intel. Anymore. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. That was a good tweet. They. Yeah. I mean, if if I if one of the first uh, uh, first Apple Silicon based Macs that Apple releases this fall were a Mac Mini, which is 
uh, the undisputable yeah. the desktop computer that I want in my office uh, to when I make my upgrades. I would almost certainly buy it. Uh, I would not. I would not mind being you know, eating the first generation of dog food, uh, partly because I'm intrigued by what an ARM processor is going to be giving me two years from now, and I can't afford to buy two two fifteen hundred dollar desktops in two years just out of curiosity. Um, on a notebook, uh, when it comes to a notebook, I'm still sort of like hedging my bets. I don't know what I want right now, uh, but that's. I would not hesitate to buy an ARM based uh, Mac Mini if one released. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna buy an iMac because an iMac is just not no. what I want. I'm not gonna. No. I'm still skeptic. I'm still uh, the the MacBook Pro is still not necessarily what I want. It doesn't instill joy in me immediately, as uh, as Condo would, as Marie Condo would uh, might say. Uh, and so I'm still trying to figure out if that's what I want. I'm st and I'm still even trying to figure out if a two thousand dollar laptop is still even relevant to how I use computers in 2021, uh, as opposed to the mid 2000s. Uh, but but I'm, I'm, all I'm trying to communicate here is that I don't think anybody is going to be hosed if they buy an Intel based Mac this year. Uh, you 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 have to you always have to balance uh you, I, my 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 advice to people is always the same that don't consider a hardware upgrade until you have a firm idea of how it's going to either solve a problem for you or create an opportunity for you uh, but the other thing is that if you need a computer today Think about everything you're going to lose in the next year by waiting until next year for a machine that might never actually come yeah. or might be irrelevant to your needs. Like imagine if I were holding off on a really, really bad old MacBook for two years saying, I know there's a there's a major redesign of the MacBook MacBook Pro coming. So, oh, by the way, here it is. And now it has a keyboard you can't possibly use. So you were kind of an idiot for waiting two years when you could have been <laughs> using the last generation of good for you because MacBooks. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh and certainly, I think we've all converged on this. We talked about it on Sunday on Twitter as well, that if you need a Mac, there's no reason not to buy a Mac right now. There's yeah, no right. reason to delay. Uh, and if you don't, then it might be worth waiting. I just, yeah. I don't remember, but my sense is those G4s felt pretty old pretty quick. Not because they were old, but just because you wanted the new Intel Mac. But Intel, yeah, Intel was providing such – well, there's a tweet by Steve Trotton-Smith that, that he put up yesterday where he said the developer transition kit, which is a two-year-old iPad chip, runs x86-64 <laughs> code in emulation faster than the Surface Pro X runs it natively. Uh, Qualcomm, <laughs> what are we even doing? And that again, this is like the worst that we will ever see um, app, uh, OS, Mac OS running on Apple Silicon. And it's really so, like, okay. And Apple's done year over year over year improvements. They said 100 times in 10 years – uh, improvement. So, it, and Intel is still doing so badly that it's hard not to imagine within two, three years they'll have a significant lead. Uh, not, not maybe not in terms of like what a Xeon can do, but in terms of power per watt and what Apple can do in like the iPhone. Like people complain about MacBooks all the time how hot they are. Nobody complains about how hot an iPad is, and it's fast. So mm. there, there are certain aspects that are highly appealing about what this combination is going to bring. Yeah. And the benchmarks are out, and uh, I don't want to report on them because they're out illegally. Apple was very clear if you got one of the developer yeah. kits, you were not to benchmark it. But they do leak out uh, because people forget that if you if you geek bench it, it's going to be posted on the site unless you yeah. say otherwise. <laughs> uh, and you know, it's not the it's not as super fast, but it's but it's pretty impressive. The two year old architecture could could run as well as it has. And almost everyone has been running it in emulation. They've been downloading Geekbench from the Mac App Store, which is the Intel version, and running it through Rosetta. So that is really... And so the numbers you're seeing is the emulated Yeah, the that's performance really numbers. bad, yeah. On an iPad chip. <laughs> yeah. So, I know, I'm excited. I, I mean, honestly, if my real advice would be, you probably don't need a computer. <laughs> Just stop buying computers. <laughs> that's your mistake. What's a computer, Leo? That's a computer. <laughs> what they want you to do. <laughs> you don't need a computer. Uh, but, they don't need no stinking computer. Yeah. Uh, Apple Design, there are other stories. We'll go to those real quickly uh, before we get your picks of the week. Apple Design Award winners came out and yesterday, or today, I think. And uh, Darkroom, which is a beautiful photo editor. It's a, you know, actually, Darkroom on iPad to me yeah. is why I don't need Photoshop or Lightroom. It's just gorgeous from Bergen. It's so good. Uh, I haven't played this game, Loom, with three O's. From Iorama Studio, it's an animation playground with music creation tools. We'll be doing this on iOS today next week. We're going to do all of the uh, 
we'll, we'll demo and, and play with all of the uh, award winners. Uh, Shaper 3D, which is a CAD app for the iPad. Wow. <laughs> um, that's wow. Again, wow. Yeah. An iPad and Apple Pencil. Um, I haven't tried it. Later this year, they say it's going to use the LiDAR scanner so you can generate 3D and yeah. 2D floor plans. Wow. Just wow. Staff Pad. I haven't used any of these. This converts handwritten musical notation into digital sheet music. That's cool. And then you can use your Apple Pencil with it after you've done that. In the game series, I do agree with this. The Apple Arcade game, Sayonara Wild Hearts, which is not only beautiful, it's an album. It's a music album. And it's got a great soundtrack. That's from uh, Simago from Malmo, Sweden. And another beautiful one, Sky, Children of the Light, which is a, a social quest that uh, actually comes from that game company. They did something very similar. I think it was on the Xbox or the PlayStation that I played that I really liked. And this is kind of the continuation. Song of Bloom from indie developer Philip Stolenmeyer. A, a one guy, a one man crew. Uh, looks like there's popcorn involved. I don't know. Song of Bloom. <laughs> uh, Where Cards Fall. The, so beautiful. Yeah. The Game Band. Publisher's Snowman. That looks like a kind of a platform puzzle game, right? That was one of the inaugural Apple Arcade games where like, it was just so moody and atmospheric yes. and you would have all these card structures. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. So there you go, the, uh, the winners of the uh, Apple Design Awards. Eight developers, eight apps. Uh, I would say the ones I've played, they're all stellar. I mean, it really just shows you what great work is being done uh, on iOS. Well done. Yeah. Apple is adding. I do wish there was a Mac category, like just to Andy's point yeah. previously, that maybe they're waiting yeah. for the relaunch before yeah. they have a Mac category again. Well, then they can have a unified category. <laughs> <laughs> it just runs the Apple Silicon category. Um, wouldn't it be great. Wouldn't it be great to see, like at least maybe it's a special award or a special competition for shortcuts. I think that yeah. we're seeing such that sophisticated cool. and interesting shortcuts these days. That would be cool. almost, almost like almost like it would be like the best demo. It'd be like the best the, the best use of one finger touch. <laughs> on an Apple Watch, or the best use of one tap uh, on a what but one, does one action win or does Matthew win? Green. Yeah, really. There's only yeah, two true. choices. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'd also, I honestly would love to see things like clips be highlighted because I want to see more apps yeah. using clips. So there's an opportunity yeah. for Apple to uh, to promote some of these technologies. Yeah. Often they launch these really neat technologies and then, you know, nobody pays them any App attention. App Store they, launch day, like the, when the iOS version launches, they typically have categories that highlights all the apps that best represent what the new features in good, iOS are. It's like on the front page yeah. of the App Store, good. you'll have all the Clips apps and all the ARKit 4 apps and all the apps that use whatever other new technology they want, like the best widgets probably. Yeah. All of that yep. stuff. Apple is adding, as uh, Firefox has done, Support for encrypted DO, DNS, it's DOH and DOT. That's a good thing. Uh, a lot of people yeah. don't like it, uh, especially Internet service providers. Uh, it is not a VPN. In fact, it's, it, you shouldn't use it and a VPN. Use one or the other. But it does at least keep your ISP from seeing what pages uh, you're visiting. So that's a good thing. Um, yeah. A new uh, way to get an Apple card if you've been turned down. My son who's just getting started in his credit life, doesn't want to apply for an Apple card because he's afraid of getting turned down. Well, Henry, now you could apply for it. And if you do get turned down, they have a four-month plan, a path to Apple card, telling you how you can get approved in uh, as little as uh, four months. It's an opt-in program, leverages information that Goldman Sachs used to determine credit worthiness to outline why they were declined and have, uh, help them improve those specific financial markers so that in four months they can achieve the holy grail, an Apple card. <laughs> Apple wants consume. to consume. 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 You must consume. It's good for everyone. Rumor. Give up your personal dreams so you can make, you can make more money and buy more things. Oh. Yes, it is the way. It is the way. Another rumor from Mr. Kuo or Mr. Ming Chi, I'm not sure. Uh, Kuo, uh, Ming Chi San. No, no, he's Chinese. Never mind. Ming Chi Xian uh, Yeah, Xian Chang. Who says that Apple will not put the charger or ear pods in the next iPhone. 
And I for because one, there's no ports, Leo. I mean, how could they have a how could they have headphones? Will it be the portless one? No Actually, I think this is a good <laughs> no. idea. There's billions of tons of e-waste created every year by useless chargers. Certainly by now, you have a charger you could use with your iPhone, and if not, you can buy one from Apple. Yeah, yeah a new one. It looks like a 20 volt. I don't, the thing that's interesting to me volt, is yeah. that people are like, well. I, Apple better cut the price of the iPhone by the same amount as the charger, believing that the retail price of like, I think it's like 20 bucks for the five watt and 40 bucks for the uh, 18 watt. And Apple pays dollars like they very, very little for those things. And they're never going to sell a six hundred and ninety seven dollar iPhone. <laughs> so the only logical thing I like. They're, they're probably going to eat the cost of 5G. Like a lot of vendors have risen, have raised prices by 100 bucks. Oh, when you look so at this what helps with a that. A Samsung yeah. phone costs this year compared to last year. They're just going to eat that cost, and then they'll hope that you don't notice the loss of a couple accessories along the way. That's actually but what you can it, order them if you want them. That's what MG Siegler uh, says. He says the number one reason is margins because of these exp expensive 5G components and mm. the COVID uh, hit to the supply chain. He also says it's good for the environment because it makes these boxes smaller. You can ship them easier. And he says it's the next iPhone that's not going to have ports, so you might as well get people used to it. <laughs> I think that's fair. I think that's fair. And then you know, uh, you know, yeah, it's the all about getting people to, to expect a little less. Yeah. But but, but wouldn't it be now this uh, this is this is something that occurred to me after I was working through my complicated feelings regarding this rumor. But wouldn't it be interesting if Apple did the math and realized that here are here's the number of of chargers we are not going to ship in this calendar year in this region and simply said we are going to we're going to package in like just little like uh, blister packs uh the same sort of like really cheap two dollar chargers and we're going to basically send them out to every apple store and if someone comes into an apple store with an apple iphone that they've bought in in recent history and said hey i need a charger they just get it they're, they're just handed a charger immediately so that to, so so that to say that look if we if you really need a charger if you really if you don't already have one or if you think that you can't afford ten dollars for a charger uh but via amazon Come into an Apple store. We'll give you a charger. We, we also will take note of when was the last time you asked for a free one. We gave one to you. But not only would that be saying that, oh, that would negate the idea of, well, how come you're not giving me what you used to give me? But it would also say that, oh, my God, I can't believe I lost my charger. Being able to walk into an Apple store and, like, be handed a charger, that would be, like, one of the most amazing goodwill things that That's they could true. do through the Apple store. That's true. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not even you want a bumper? Fine. You get a bumper. <laughs> <laughs> Babies. That's how they do it. That's how they do it. I wonder... Um, I mean, the reason that they ostensibly they kicked Hay out of the app store is because when you download the app and open it up, it did nothing. <laughs> and we don't want apps that do nothing. Well, what if you bought a phone and you didn't have a charger in it? It wouldn't, you really, you'd be kind of stuck too, wouldn't you? Especially in jurisdictions yeah. where you can't ship a phone with electrical charge anymore. Yeah. You'd be kind of like, well, that's nice. Here's a piece of but glass. The, it, it looks it like the nothing. EU is going to mandate this anyway. And right. I know Apple has been pushing back really hard. I, like, the thing with the EU, though, is they're so nebulous. Like when they said that you have to have um, standardized chargers, do they mean the plug? Do they mean the cable? Right. It's, Every it's news outlet clear. covered it differently. Yeah. And it's, it looks like they mean they're going to actually mandate no plugs in boxes. And Apple fought them on the cable, but it doesn't look like they're going to fight them on the plug because the plug doesn't mean anything to it, lightning. Like it just doesn't care about lightning so why why fight them on and it the whole thing is just i i don't know what percentage of apple iphone buyers don't have a charger but maybe and if you swap from android you probably have a usb c have a charger, charger. Which is, you know, usb c yeah. cable they, they'll put the cable in the box or no i guess yes. not will they yeah no oh. I, yeah i believe the cable okay. is supposed to be in the box okay yeah. Last, I, I will say, I will say, they're going to be really bummed out if the next iPhone ships without a charging port or a, data, a charging slash data point port. I don't think it's nearly time for that yet. No, probably a year or two away. And 13. I wonder if the technology, like in the R Mac, sorry, I'm calling it R Max already, huh? The Apple Silicon Mac, uh, where it has that recovery partition, is going to be part of yeah. their their answer to some of the problems with portless uh, devices. Sure. Yeah, there and they, 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 there's. I'm sorry. I know that you were trying to wrap up. I'm no, sorry I'm not. For, uh, I got lots of time. But but uh, <laughs> they, uh, they. So long as uh, my my position has always been, 
you can't if you're going to take away something from me make sure you're giving me something that is as compelling as the thing you're taking away so if apple were able to, if two years from now or three years from now apple is going to make the case that well and thanks to our 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 best in class battery life now you can get now you get three out three days worth of battery life uh out of out of a single charge so it's no longer unlike some of our brothers and sisters in the android community you are not going to run out of <laughs> run out of charge and need to have a, a usb battery pack with you at all times and by and also we identified this as a point of compromise uh, for people who either government or individuals who are trying to get data off of your phone without your permission and we've also introduced so many different technologies that allow you to recover this this machine uh re recover your device without having to plug it into a device that we've essentially re we feel as though we've addressed every need for a, an actual physical connector and and gotten rid of it I would that I would fall in line pretty quickly if they just simply say we decided it was bumming us out that we had to cut a hole in our beautiful iPhone, so we didn't. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll say bye, bye, <laughs> see ya. Yeah. Or it could have like it could still have a smart connector and an adapter that lets you plug it in if you that's, really want. I to like be that. Wired actually, about yeah. it. I think that's a good idea. The smart connector on the back that solves the whole. Yeah, which is what they're doing but with the it, iPad Pro and the keyboard now. Right. Yeah, I I don't think that would work as well because. Uh, I, uh, the life that I the life that I lead with iPhones and with Android phones right now does not involve. Well, I buy I own one charging stand or two charging stands. It's that I always have a position. I, I, I'm if I'm two rooms away from the room where I have my my one or two chargers, and that's a big problem for me. Where, uh, whereas if I were in a position where at some point in life, at some point in, in, in every year, I misplaced my, I, oh, that's my three foot charging cable. I, I need a six foot one and I'll order a couple of more from Amazon, which means that there's one in my every single laptop bag I have. There's one pretty much uh, within reach everywhere. If it were sort if uh, I'm uh, the, one of the bummers of my, uh, of my Sony uh, Walkman music player, uh, as I, as I, as I said, when I made it a pick of the week is that it uses this Stupid, like you know, original Sony Walkman style charge, non-standard charging port, which means that there are times where I don't use it because I need to. I'm no, I know I'm going to be going for a walk later in the day, but I can't find my one copy of this charging cable, so it goes uncharged for for a good amount of time. I fear that that if Apple decided that Pogo pins uh, is going is going to be the way to go, again another set of incompatible cables I'm going to need. I don't think that's going to be as good as simply saying, just give us USB-C. Just give us USB-C. Yeah. What's wrong with USB-C? Especially on the pro iPhones. <laughs> yeah. I How take it back. I, I take it back. We are in a hurry to get rid of the show for two important reasons. Oh. One, the first launch for Space Force is mere minutes away. Ooh. It's a GPS Ooh. satellite. But it is the first launch for Space Force. G.I. Joe. <laughs> and I've got a brisket on my Traeger that I think I have. <laughs> there we go. That's the real Br reason. Brisket is always an acceptable excuse for ending <laughs> yes. any, any meeting early. I've got yeah, to my brisket. Boom. wrap it in foil. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, gentlemen. I need this vehicle. It's a brisket emergency. <laughs> Last story. Apple is losing. Apple News is losing the New York Times. Uh, I don't know if this will be the first of many defections. We've talked before about how publishers are not thrilled about the fact they don't get any customer information from Apple, that it doesn't drive a lot of traffic. Uh, very few organizations are as big and as rich and as powerful as the New York Times. But starting yesterday, Times articles no longer appearing on the Apple News feed. So we'll see if this what this means for uh, for it's Apple. It's still news. only in like four countries. I mean, it's it's so the opposite of every one of Apple's other services. Yeah, I just I I keep checking and I just I get too much useless material in it. It's just not a good feed for mm -hmm. me, and I can't bookmark and send it out anyway because it just sends out a bookmark to Apple News, which is useless. <laughs> I think they're fixing that too, yeah. and I think they're also adding a way which I wanted, where if you click on a link to a web to an article that you don't subscribe on the web, but you do have it through Apple News, it'll send you to Apple News, which has always been my frustration with like Wall Street Journal and New York Times. Yeah, I don't pay like for that. some of these, and so I can't see them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, if you know, and by the way, that's we didn't we barely touched on iOS 14, but there's some nice, really nice features coming. Including so the ability to uh, set a different default browser and email program, which I think is we need a bigger show, Leo. Yeah, we need a bigger, we need a bigger show. show. But the great the great thing is that week by week we, we are weekly less dumb about what we what we knew a week before. That's true. 
Oh, and, and for people who are, because a lot of people are complaining they don't see that in the beta, developers have to flag an app saying it's a candidate uh, for a browser and for email, and Apple has to approve it because they don't want some company to make a scam yeah. browser that just redirects <laughs> you to their Amazon affiliate links or just shows you a bunch of tracker ads. So like if Chrome says we're a browser, Apple's like, yes, you are. But if like Vita browser X3Z or something comes up and says, please, they're like, no, sorry. Do you, wanna, you make Chrome OS apps Do you want to watch the rocket go up? Is it uh, almost time, John? Or is it... Uh, Five more minutes? Okay. <laughs> Space Force. Ooh, that, that, that could be our, like, like $300 million outro if we time it perfectly. If we time yeah. it right. Andy Yanako, your pick it of is, the week. Uh, unfortunately, Carl Reiner passed away today at oh, 98. No. Not, not, not unexpected, oh, but, un, but still very, very oh. sad. Uh, my, uh, where do you start? Where do you begin to talk about how wonderful he was? Uh, I'm just going to use my pick of the week to recommend it. I, I, I was an avid collector of his memoirs. He started writing his memoirs in his 80s, and his audiobooks of these memoirs are amazing because he did, he did start off life as a performer, quickly became a writer-performer, but you can see how much, how often and over the previous like decades he had told each of these stories and how he had honed each of these stories about his life and his his making making his way through it the Atemri story he has honed each story to razor precision not an ounce of fat on it uh and there, if when i've got when i look at my greatest hits in my in my audible library uh starting with my anecdotal life uh, it, these are uh, often just uh, Carl Reiner's uh, Carl Reiner stories so it's we were again, lucky very, very to very have sad, him as long as we did i mean he was even doing a quarantine yeah. uh, podcast dispatches from quarantine and, and 98 he was, and he was, years old and he had a great twitter account and he just never yeah. ever yeah. ever stopped that yeah. is so aspirational to be to be fortunate enough to have your health and your wits about you in your 90s but also to not have lost your passion and the joy you you you, you take in the career that you so luckily found for yourself when you're 18 19 20 years old that is such a blessing <sighs> Well, at least the two thousand year old man is still alive. So, uh, we yep. we will. Uh, I will go home tonight and watch all of me. So, uh, yes, yes, yeah. All right, that's a sad way to go. But uh, yes, I'm glad you mentioned it. I hadn't heard. Um, I'm big, big, big fan. Of course, his son Rob Reiner, also a very successful director and actor and comedian. Carl Reiner at the age of ninety eight. Ninety eight. Ninety eight. Mel Brooks about five years behind him. And, and still just as sharp. Still just as sharp, yeah. Uh, Renee, your pick of the week. So, I mean, going after Andy Nako in the best of times is really difficult. <laughs> but to go with something so self-serving as I am doing after he has been so self-serving. Oh, self go ahead. It's on the Renee much, Ritchie yeah. channel. <laughs> So I got a chance to sit down and talk to uh, two people from Apple, uh, Cecilia, who is part of iOS product marketing, and Katie, who was actually at the keynote. She was the one doing the privacy demonstration, and she manages user privacy at Apple. And we spoke uh, for about half an hour on the iOS uh, user interface changes and things like messages and maps. And then we spoke for about you know another 15 minutes about privacy and how Apple views privacy and sort of the way in which they're continuously driving this giant privacy machine that they're containing. And it, it was absolutely a delightful, great way for me to end WWDC, just uh, some casual chat about the stuff that I, I, I was on this complete espresso in WWDC high, so I'm really not even sure what I said <laughs> during this whole thing. But they were eloquent, informative, and just super, Looks like super gracious. Looks like she, uh, she got Craig Fig Federighi's seat on the ring. Because I see the <laughs> I see the rainbow outside her uh, window. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's it was really cool. Katie smart, smart it. people. Yeah, really nice. That's on the Renee Ritchie channel, which one must watch at youtubecom slash Ritchie. Andy and Akko, of course, you're going to be on WGBH Boston when. Uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, because of the July 4th holiday, I'm moved up. So I'm going to be on uh, 1 p.m. on Wednesday. Uh, as usual, tune into WGBHnews.org to stream it live or later when it gets posted. Very good. And, of course, Mac Break Weekly appears every Tuesday around 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. If you want to tune in and watch, we have a live audio and video stream at twit.tv slash live. Uh, you can also get on-demand versions of the show at our website, twit.tv slash mbw. Of course, our favored way, the best way you could possibly get it would be to subscribe in your favorite podcast application because, after all... Who wants to get up of a Tuesday and not have Mac Break Weekly waiting for them to listen to? <laughs> uh, next week, I don't know who's going to be on. We'll get Lori back. 
let's just have all the three of you and see if Alex can make it. I don't know. We'll just. We'll, we'll just we'll just wait. Once it. again, uh, you just got to see. I wonder what what high profile person is streaming live this afternoon. <laughs> Always my first thought yeah. when Alex. Yeah, no, here. I know, I know, it's great. And he he only told us yesterday, so it must have been something important and urgent. <laughs> I'll have to think about that. Mm. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am sad to say it's time to go back to work because break time is over. Meanwhile, let's exit with my pick of the week: a giant rocket ship. On its way. Ten, nine, eight. Into the seven, sky. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. The GPS Go satellite. Falcon. Go GPS. SpaceX launch is it? Third generation, whatever that means. It means they'll know exactly where you are at all times, and it's part of our space force. Yep. The first Space Force launch. There it it's, too bad the there's, there's, no. it's too bad there's no bass in that re, in that audio. It sounds like a like a baking soda and vinegar rocket. <laughs> if you were there, you would be able to feel you'd the no bass. No longer have eardrums. Even yeah. if you couldn't hear it, you'd yeah, be able exactly. to feel it. Yeah. The first Diet Coke and Mentos rocket to breach low Earth <laughs> orbit. <laughs> I need something more than than the speedtest.net graphics, too. Come on, this is Space Force. Yeah. Now National Geographic is going to take us down again because they own space. Thank you, Renee Ritchie. Thank you, Andy Thank Anako. You Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, folks, I'm Micah Sargent, host of Hands on iOS right here on the Twit Network. If you've got iOS devices or watchOS devices or tvOS device, any kind of Apple mobile device, you are going to want to check out Hands on iOS. It is the best way to make the most of those devices. I walk through tips, tricks, and everything in between, plus answer your questions. So be sure to check it out. It's twit.tv slash HOI.